That's my boss always just chilling in the closet. <laughs> Are you ready for this? It's another edition of KFC Radio on the Barcelona Sports Network. It's Clancy and Feidelberg. Um, and later tonight will be, I think, the first time in history, maybe, maybe not, that you and I have gone against each other in something at Barstool. Have we ever, I, I, actually, I think you're right. Have we ever been on opposite teams for any of these, you know, these nonsense? I mean, definitely nothing. Like, I mean, maybe at some point, it's. I, I don't have a memory of everything we've ever done. I know when. I mean, I, Jenga. I've only played with you, never against you. We have we, like we've done like one on one things where we've been against each other, like like the the figure skating competition. We were against each other. Yeah. But, like, okay. Oh well, man, no one's ever got hosed more than Feidelberg on the figure skating, <laughs> dude. The figure skating contest. That's old school bar stool, old school bro show, if you will. A lot of people probably don't even know what that means anymore, bro show. Back when we used to do these crazy That was our that was our fucking YouTube channel. Yes. It's the bro it's, show yo. It's it was youtube.com slash it's the bro show yo. What the <laughs> fuck was Portnoy thinking on that one? Oh my god. I mean, I'll give him bro show. I don't remember ever like discussing that. Uh you know, at the time, like, bros and bro Bible and frat move and all that shit was, like, a big deal. So, bro works, bro show. But the yo? You ever bro. seen – have you ever heard Dave be like, what up, yo? <laughs> it's the bro it's, show, that yo. Actually, that might be Gaz. That might be Gaz setting yeah. up a YouTube channel and bro show was taken. Well, then what's he thinking? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's the bro show, yo. I remember people being like, I can't find Barstool's YouTube channel. I was like, because you have to search it's the bro show, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but man, that was the that only was thing me. that was like the only thing that was like as bad as that was the keep reading bitches. No, but people love that. People like really? it, it, at least there was um no no I shouldn't say people love that. But at the at the bottom of every web page web web page is that what it's called? Like yeah right. The way it was designed, yes, yeah yeah. Ba back when it was just a blog and we had a web page. Uh, you know, there was like five or six blogs on a page, and then you have to click to page two. And at the bottom, there was a, a rather than just saying like click to keep reading, it said keep reading, bitches, which <laughs> I think is kind of like our fight club. Like if you were to if you were to like see an OG stoolie or something, if someone like the way you know if someone's OG, you'd be like keep reading, and they go like bitches. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's that's for the true guys who like. When we were only on desktop. I remember. Dude, there's so many fucking things. There's so many fucking things in this company that I was, like, emailing Dave and him being, like, I don't get it. Like, I was early. Like, maybe, like, 2000, like, 10 or 11. This guy was, like, let me make you an app. Like, you need an app. And I went to Dave and I was, like, I got this this uh, developer who wants to make us an app. And he was, like, why? We, we already are on, like, mobile. You can just go on, like, you know. You can go on the like you can go on the internet on your phone, and I was like, I know, yeah, you, we do have like, mo and that was at that point. I don't even know if we did have mobile. I think it was still like a desktop on your phone, so you had to like, yeah, screw, yeah, you know. Yeah. But he was like, no, we're just on the internet. And I was like, I know, but this is like a, you know, this is a real thing. And he, no, never happened. He's like, oh, okay, Dude, yeah, I, who needs an app? I think I remember him because Whitney, Whitney's always been a Barcelona fan, mm -hmm. and Whitney was like borderline. And if I, I think if you put him to a lie detector test. I would bet you Whitney was a commenter for a while. Oh, um, hell yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah, he had multiple commenter names, that motherfucker. <laughs> but he used to reply to tweets all the time. Yeah. And uh, I, I, you know, this is, I'm 99% sure this happened. I, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like Dave tweeted, like, do we need a mobile app? Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone just goes to the website. And Whitney was like, yeah, you don't need an app. Reply. <laughs> <laughs> These not, dumb again, motherfuckers. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure. I remember seeing that and be like, I don't know. I can't, I can't get with you. Now. <laughs> I mean, apps, podcasts, YouTube, like, <laughs> like major, major things that are like, like not even like ideas that I quote unquote had or something. These were like sweeping internet movements that have just become a part of the culture of of the of like technology and all three of them were met with like nah we don't do that i was like god Dude, damn it you guys imagine being an anti-apper 
like, nah, we don't need it. <laughs> uh, could, imagine right now, nowadays, saying like, who needs an app? Who, who, who a podcast? <laughs> that's not gonna work. What you want to you want to do video on YouTube? I mean, <laughs> crazy. And hey, and that's what's wild is that we still made it to like a half a billion dollar company. You know, <laughs> it's almost like I, I actually believe truly deep down in my heart we wouldn't have got to to where we're at if we were led by the type of guy who says yes to an app and to podcasts and to YouTube. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, those are obviously the correct choices, but being 10 years late on each of them, I think is what like made us who we are. So it actually worked yeah, out it, okay. It's, it's we, 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 everyone else, everyone else on the goddamn internet should be fucking lucky because we <laughs> shot ourselves in the foot oh. many times. And we still and we and still, still beat you. Winning. We still we're are. Still, <laughs> we're still laughed, you guys. We're hobbling, fucking leaking blood all over the track. <laughs> and somehow we're still in front. <laughs> but the, so all, all the reason all this comes up is because back when we were doing those bro shows, um, it was basically you know the Dan and Dave show. It was the Dave show for a long time, and then Dan came along, and he was so good on camera, and they were the two like hyper competitive ones where we were just like, oh god, do we have to do this? But this was right up Feidelberg's alley, ice skating. So, like, I don't even remember. I think I did, like, a Pitch Perfect. Like, Pitch Perfect was at the time. I did cups. And, I mean, I really couldn't skate, so I didn't do anything well. Dan did, like, an eight-minute routine. Remember that? It just kept going and going where he did Chumbawamba where it was I, I, I get knocked down, but I get up again. And it was, like, funny the first couple times, but if you remember that Chumbawamba song, they say it, like, 60 times, and he just kept <laughs> falling down and getting up. I don't even remember what Dave did. And Fidelberg comes in doing, like, triple axles and shit, doing a strip tease. He took off his clothes. He was doing twirls. The kid, the only person who could actually skate, and somehow, like, he wasn't even in the – he was, like, the first one eliminated or something. It was crazy town. It was what happened was I I did the if if anyone uh, has seen Slapshot right it's the uh, he does like he, he just starts taking off all his clothes and um, so I did that scene and I added a couple of pirouettes and things like that into it and but I went first and he just can't go first you really can't it, go first they don't, they don't know who's coming next so right like, I got I got my grade but they had to give enough to be like well you know he can't be a ten because what if Someone else is. Thousands although, I mean, they've seen everyone warm up. You could have. <laughs> you could have guessed. Could have guessed that yeah. I was the only one who could fucking skate. Yeah, you. You, all, you probably got like like a seven or something like that, and then we came along and it was like, oh wait a minute, that should have been a fucking ten. I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the um the uh what the fuck was gonna say um Gronk was the guest uh judge. Gronk was. That's what I was gonna say. That was the funniest part. Was that Gronk was just off fucking ACL surgery? Like just off ACL surgery. We had to put him in a chair on the bench and then fucking slide across he was, the ice. Because he was about to walk on the ice. I remember being like, Rob, stop. Like, <laughs> no, no. You have an unstable knee like two days off of surgery. You can't walk on ice. Barstool will never get another <laughs> guest ever. Yeah, we pushed him like a fucking uh, wheelchair on ice over to the the judge's desk. Um, yeah, that was those were the good old days. Dude, bro, speaking of hockey. I watched a documentary last night. Yeah, I did it. A documentary, John Feidelberg. Mister, I don't want to watch documentaries because they're too one-sided. Yeah, because this one's so ridiculous that like it's enter- it's pure entertainment. It's not like it's not. It's, it's like all things. Fans of documentaries ruin documentaries. Yes, because they fans of everything are what ruin everything. I mean, I'm a Mets fan, brother. I better I know better fan. than anybody that's the fans that ruin things. <laughs> and um, so it is. It's it's called Untold. But it's part of the Untold series on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And it's called Crime and Penalties. Do you know of this story? Because it's a New England. It's a it's a northeast story. It's New England, but northeast. It is. I don't think so. What it's is it? the Danbury Trashers, which is the UHL hockey team, which is a now defunct like minor league hockey team, mm-hmm. but minor league hockey league. Mm-hmm. And, and so this dude, Jimmy Galanti. Oh, he say is, no more. Jimmy Galanti. Hey, oh, how you doing? <laughs> bro, he's the real life Tony Soprano. Right. Like okay. They, they say like there's a real, like he has an autograph from James Gandolfini saying to the real life Tony Soprano, James Gandolfini. Wow. It is like he owned a mega uh, fucking 
trash enterprise mm -hmm. with like 70 trucks mm -hmm. in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Did all the like Westchester County and mm -hmm. fucking this part of New York. He did all this stuff. I want to say the, uh, I want to say that the Galantes are like. I think they're like might be from my town. Like some of the Galantes are like in my town that I that I went really? to high school in. Yeah, like my 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 high school town was pretty pretty connected, pretty pretty re gang related. And I I want to say the Galantes are in there because I remember hearing that name a lot. But yeah, they they're not to be trifled with. Dude, dude the fucking the uh, what was I gonna say the 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 Sopranos are so based on this family that the kid's name is AJ. Oh yeah, like the the real kid's name is AJ. <laughs> <laughs> and the um but the <laughs> but the um but so anyway aj was a big fan of hockey he played in high school got an injury couldn't play anymore and he's like he was sad his career's over 17 years old sad his hockey career's over to be honest they were showing highlights i don't think his career was going much further <laughs> he anyway. never got his career started uh, like, yeah it, it was he was gonna have a high school career that ended in high school so it ended in high school um but so his dad fucking bought him a minor league hockey team and 17 aj galante was the fucking president and gm of the team right? and he he fucking he said he and he's he's involved jimmy's involved in this in this thing in this documentary which is like it's like part the hockey part the fbi investigation right into jimmy galante right and um so the kid is like he's like i ran it the way i fuck the way my two loves Pro wrestling and the Mighty Ducks. And these guys would just – yo, so they paid everyone under the table. They were like some players were involved in it too. Yeah. And they're like, dude, we would score – I'd score a game-winning goal. Jimmy would walk in just throw $10,000 at my feet. <laughs> like he's like – it was just – he's like, we were paid so much money under the table. Dude, they would get calls on the bench, like pregame, like, like the equipment manager who's a lunatic, an absolute lunatic. Right, dude, they were showing highlights of this guy coaching children, like middle school children, younger than that, fucking bashing them into the boards. And then they ask him, like, did you hit kids when you were when you were coaching them? He goes, Yeah, I mean cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> this is all on the record? Is, is, this is in the in in this in the documentary? In the documentary, oh, Kevin. Shit. And there, there are so many characters in this, but they're talking so this one guy, Brad Wingfield, who is like just a fucking animal. And he's talking about opening night, the first game, and the equipment manager taps him on the shoulder and hands him a phone and points up to the owner's box, mm -hmm. and Jimmy's waving the phone, and, and he answers it, and he goes, the second the puck drops, fight. <laughs> and so the guy gets out there, just first thing, drops a glove, just sprints out to start fucking bagging on people. Dude, it was nuts. <laughs> Dude, they had, so it was, this was an 04, it's in, Kevin. It's insane. Was, was there any it's reason? For, there did, so did, did, he, did he say why he wanted him to fight, or he just wanted him to fight? Just wanted him to get the crowd into it, baby. <laughs> like it was opening night. Got to have the trashers. They called like they were the evil empire. They called the stadium hell. It was just welcome to hell, <laughs> dude. They were they were fucking clips of guys just taking full baseball swings at people. And then this isn't like some beer league. This is say, it's a real minor, minor league. league. Yeah, yeah. Were they were they like, like were they good? They were very good yeah. because they. They, they had goons, but they also had really good – dude, Brian Gretzky's brother was on the team. Brent, Brent Gretzky had, was on the team. They had a Gretzky? Dude, he was the first player they announced. Oh, man. Dude, I'll, I'll be honest. AJ, like, is kind of smart. Like, AJ knew what he was – he was 17 years old, but, like, at his press conference, he's like – He's like, he's like, all right, time to announce our first player and our captain, Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe have heard of him, Gretzky. That's unreal. The, uh, but he's not involved in this documentary, believe it or not. It's stunning. Um, but the <laughs> the whole thing is, it's fucking nuts. But what was it? Ah, fuck, I forgot what I was just going to say. I was going to say something else. I don't remember. But he, like, I, I tip my cap to AJ. He knew what he was doing. It was it was this something, it's, it's crazy. something like minor league hockey. You probably can run. Oh, oh, I remember. I remember. It was so it was in 04, right? And the NHL locked out in 2004. Right. So this is how legit of a league it was. AJ had gone to the, the Devils won the cup the year before. And AJ had gone to the clinching game. And Mike Rupp, who now works for NHL Network, I think, he's a good, very good player. Yeah. He scored the game winning goal. Uh -huh. And he's like, I want Rupp. So, and Rupp's involved in this documentary. 
And so Rob goes, my agent calls me once the lockout's announced. And he goes, hey, I just talked to this minor league team in, in Connecticut. And the owner, he wants to just pay you with a duffel bag of cash. And Red Rob goes, what? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, yeah, he just wants to give you like a, like a big bag of cash to come play for his team. And I was like, yeah, okay. all right. Sounds good and to so me. He was, so it was like, it was a legit enough league that like a, a bona fide NHL player was, was like, all right, that's where I'll go to the lockout. Well, it's, it's so it's like, yeah, AJ's smart, but is there was there like a salary cap? Are there rules? Or was it just like I can spend all the money in the world because I have Jimmy Galante backing me? No, there was a salary cap, but they don't fucking factor in the cash that you give it. Oh, everybody. right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's unreal. What, untold Stories, what's it called? It's called Untold um, Crime and Penalties. Crime and, and, pen- and oh, penalties. Oh, penalties. I get it now. Clever. The um the uh the the commissioner of the league who's heavily involved in this documentary as well we, also another great character um he the fbi was trying to get him to he, he the whole time he's talking about like what a headache jimmy galante was and you know how they, you know they were just fucking causing chaos to the league but then it, like halfway through there's a shift where he's like he's like but I, like, I finally like it kind of clicked like what they were doing and it was working, working yeah it was bringing a lot of attention East sports center was doing fucking exposes on them and shit and when the FBI finally catches Jimmy, they bring in this guy, the commissioner, and they spend like six hours trying to get, convince him to admit that he was scared of Jimmy. And he's like, and I just never, and I wasn't. Like, I, the guy I knew was like kind of warm and yeah. friendly and a little crazy. Dude, that's like, always mobsters. Like, yeah. Mobsters are always that way. They're good people to the, uh, the people that they're not like, you know, in business with. And Jimmy goes, he goes, look, he's like, you know, loyalty is a funny thing because the people you never, you never expected it from, sometimes they're the one who's going to give it to you. Yes. Like that, him <laughs> not admitting that, like kept him out of jail for a long, long time. Absolutely, Dude, man. No, it, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I'm spoiling the whole thing for everybody. I don't care. It was so awesome. It was <laughs> at the end, Brad Wingfield, the guy who's the fighter. He's like, you know, I just never, I lost touch with Jimmy. I never see him anymore. Like I love, like he's such a great guy. I love Jimmy. And this guy's like the badass. He's the fucking. He's a badass. Yeah. And and then you hear from the background, heard you looking for a beaten, and he comes out, Jimmy, and he starts crying. Okay. Brad starts crying. Bro, those guys. <laughs> I, I there's a reason why the movies and the TV shows work, and it's because those guys are like modern day Robin Hood, where it's like. All the things you hate about, like, bureaucracy and the government, they don't do. And everything you like, they do do. And then they keep the fact that they, like, you know, murder people and, like, break legs under the, uh, you know, on the hush so you don't think of them as a bad guy. And everybody loves them. It's like if you can ignore all the bad shit, the, the good shit is fucking amazing. So by the end of this, I was like, this guy's the fucking man. <laughs> In the beginning, they're talking about him tying people up, putting them in garbage trucks, and lighting a truck on fire. <laughs> Dude, and, but there's something about Snake It Till You Make It, which is perfect for today because we're talking about Bishop Sycamore. Uh, you got to get some money in your pocket, and you got to uh, throw that money around. You know, if you get some cash from crypto, who knows? Next, next thing you know, maybe you could run yourself a minor league football t- uh, hockey team or create a fake football team. So you got to download FTX today. FTX is the number one crypto ad, uh, crypto buying and selling app in the world. Hey, who needs an app, right? FTX is out here allowing you to buy and sell crypto, making zillions of dollars for people. FTX has access to uh, Bitcoin, to Ethereum, to Dogecoin, to all the major uh, cryptocurrencies. You can buy and sell uh, low on fees and and any of the the bullshit. Uh, They just want to help you trade that crypto and make that money. And uh, right now, any trade over $10, you get yourself a free crypto coin. They have access to over 10 thousand different currencies and any trade uh you make buying or selling over 10 bucks you can get yourself a free crypto coin courtesy of ftx they used to be Blockfolio, changed their name to ftx so they are the uh number one app in the game you can follow them on social ftx underscore official uh ftx underscore app so uh follow along with them make that money on crypto get with the times and get your uh free crypto coin for any trade over ten dollars on ftx uh, bro, speaking of crypto, how much did you watch the Jake Paul fight, right? Yeah. How how much did that dude? I forget his name, Marco. I think the dude in the electric suit loved his joke 
about he's laughing all the way to the blockchain. Yeah. That dude said that joke five times. That was uh, <laughs> that, that was Frank the Tank with he's not going to be coaching lines anymore after the yeah. Dolphins linebacker coach did coke. Yeah, that was. I was like, bro, you realize this is the same broadcast, right? right? We can we've None heard it already. <laughs> uh, so yeah, man, the 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 dream is to uh is to you know the snake it till you make it dream is one that I've always endorsed. But there's a few examples that stick out. This this new this the minor league hockey one is a new one to add to the list. I also love the uh, John Spano story of the guy who bought the Islanders with no money, bought a <laughs> real deal. Forget about minor league hockey. Bought a full blown NHL franchise and was bankrupt at the time. He just I don't even know how he pulled that one off. He just like you know had some made off money all moving around from. <laughs> account to account or something like that. I, I'd forgotten about that story. I, I, I Honestly, I don't even know if I've ever heard that story until the Bruins Islanders series this year. And Frankie was telling me about it at um, Borelli's one night. And like they, you guys had, I mean, you guys, it, yeah, 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 you're yeah, yeah, put me in there. Um, you guys, you guys had like a welcome ceremony. Yeah. Oh no. It was like a done deal. I think. Yeah. No, he, he like won the bid and got the team. And then when it was time to run it, it was like, yeah, I don't have any money. Which is so funny because no, they said Frankie said that, that he wrote a check and sent it, but it was for like two hundred dollars. <laughs> and then and they were like, You're missing a ton of zeros on this. <laughs> Spectacular. Was, I forget I forget what the price was. You know, I'm obviously not an expert on this story. No. But Frankie was like, No, he sent a check. And then they reached out and they were like you're missing so many zeros. Bro, the, the like, the lack of, it's not even a lack of foresight. It's, like, the ability of John Spano to just live his life in the moment that he didn't even consider, like, well, pretty much immediately they're going to find out I don't have any money. <laughs> you know, like, like, what is even the point of doing this? They're going to catch me as soon as I don't have the money. But he just, like, fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. That is incredible. What, what was this? It was, when was it? it was it had to be let's find out i mean I, cuz like it, it must have been the time when you could show up at the bank and be like you know uh my 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 husband works down at the it's construction company and they're like okay you're clear good for enough a loan. yeah it was like, it was financial dude here's here's the thing it was 1996 which is that's too late for that that's what i'm saying like it's old school <laughs> but it's not that old but here's here's really the thing. If you know even a little bit about like even like the mortgage world, like they used to just give people houses. You know, they were like, "Oh, you got a job? You you promise? <laughs> you, you 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 promise you make enough money for this? Okay. Do you, you you pinky promise? Here's a fucking house, you know?" So, yeah. if my you, husband works down at the factory. <laughs> like, "Oh, well then you're all set. Here you go. <laughs> here's a five bedroom." Uh so like if you could if you if you if the banks and whatnot were were that uh, you know, lenient, and then on top of it, you're a criminal. So he knew how to do like bank fraud and wire fraud and all that shit, forgery. Right. Then you can, you know, so he did forgery in New York, Massachusetts, and Texas, uh, all including fraud to control the. Uh, so in '95, he somehow owned a 50% interest in the Dallas Stars, um, which was pushed. Wait, how? Well, uh, let's let's read it. September 95, he has a tentative agreement to buy 50% of the Dallas Stars, but the date for closing was pushed back several times, during which Spano began making what owner Norman Green called, quote, unreasonable demands. So then he backed out of the deal and was like, fuck it. Um, well, he never actually owned it. He was just kind of just in discussion. Right. Uh, he also, there was a guy on the Stars, um, the president, he went to Spano's house in the Dallas suburbs, which was like this huge mansion, but you walk in the door and all of it's unfurnished. So he just had like the great front of, of having a ton of money. Um, so he also made a bid on the Florida Panthers. That didn't work. So then you like, <laughs> like then the, like how does, how do the stars and Panthers catch on and the fucking Islanders don't? But here's the thing. How much do you think the New York Islanders cost in October of 1996? $120 million. 165 and actually, technically, only $80 million for a 90% stake in the team 
and eighty-five million for the cable television contract. So, okay. uh, you know, pretty much at the only the team itself, eighty million bucks, which is crazy because, like, you know, there are guys who could buy that shit cash today. Um, right. But he, yeah, one, one of them is our fucking boss. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, so this guy was rich. He owned a leasing operation. So at some point, he made enough money to like buy. Oh, he uh, here it is. Here we go. Inherited money from his wealthy grandfather Angelo. Bingo, bango, bongo. It's always Angelo an inheritance. Spano. Angelo Spano gave him. He claimed to be worth two hundred and thirty million. So Angelo Spano must have left him a nice little chunk of that. Uh, but then you know you blow it all on probably fucking like New York blow and hookers in the eighties and shit like that. <laughs> And uh, next thing you know, I mean, I, I don't know how the new NHL Board of Governors met in June of 97. Spano was conspicuously absent. Uh, the Islanders were represented by two men. Da, da, da. It emerged that Spano had only paid $26,200 to pick it yeah. for the cable right after five attempts. On one attempt, wire uh, here. Yeah, this, this, is, this is amazing. On one attempt, he wired five thousand dollars instead of five million. So you probably was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I just clicked the wrong button. I, I wrote, you know, they couldn't read my chicken scratch." One time he sent, <laughs> one time he sent seventeen hundred instead of seventeen million. So this guy was literally just playing the old like, "Whoops, I, uh, you know, I thought there was a decimal there. I thought it was a comma, not a decimal. I'm sorry." Unbelievable. Bro, I used to do that. I, I used to do that shit to pay rent. Did Back, you? Dude, my first my first apartment in Boston when I was like 22 years old, making 50 grand a year cash. I, I it was more expensive than what the apartment I lived in my first four years in New York. <laughs> it was the, my it was my rent I paid when I was 22 years old making 50 grand was more expensive than what I paid from ages 28 to 32. How did you pull that I, off? I, I was 27 to 31. How did you pull that off? I fucking the same way this it? motherfucker yeah. did. I keep I keep fucking forgetting to write checks or I send them the wrong address or I forget to sign it and I wait because it was more Kevin. It was more than two weeks' pay. Like right, rent, like rent due on the first. I didn't get paid that much. Right, so I would have to wait for my second paycheck to pay last in order month to pay my rent. <laughs> <laughs> so for a full year, I would just fucking. Sometimes I would just send it two weeks late. Other times I would make sure the check had some kind of issue with it so they'd have to right. send it yeah. back and I'd have my second check paycheck. Naked. I love it, dude. I, I don't think I've ever done that with money, but I used to do that with work all the time where they would be like, you have to send over the Excel file tonight by six o'clock or like you're fired, you know? And I would send over like, I would make the whole thing blank where it, it was like, something must have gone wrong like it was a corrupted file like it wasn't like here's incomplete work it was like here's work that is completely fucked up where they or i was like oh my goodness i don't know the you know the extension on the file on 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 windows must have you know what i mean but i sent it i had there was something in their inbox by 6 p.m and then that bought me till the next morning to be like, I'm so sorry I left the office after I sent it and I was working on it all night long, you know? Here you go, here it is. <laughs> and it looks exactly the same, but all filled in. Dude, that that scam, kind of shit. Scamming's so stressful, but scamming's the oh, best. Oh, scamming, scam dude. So much that's why I love that snake it till you make it mantra. It's like, it's the same thing, you know, when you're out, you're out talking to girls and you like you lie about your job or how old you are, or you're talking, to, you're you're going on a job interview and you you make up what your past experiences were, or you know you're scamming your landlord because you need an extra two weeks or whatever it is. It's like, it's a thrill, man. The adrenaline. It's like it's like I would imagine what what these guys get when they gamble when they go on the Barstool sports book and throw down a big bet. I get that from from hustling, from scheming, <laughs> from scamming, and and you can't. I don't think you can like replicate the real world circumstances that pop up where it's like do or die right now. You got to come up with an excuse. You got to get you got to get through this. Like what are you going to do? And when you pull it off, ugh, oh, it is great, dude. Great. Bro, in college, like I used to fucking I take myself to the hospital just for a doctor's note. I'd be like, yeah. I'd, be like I'd, I'd go right I fucking go. I'd go to the one class all semester and then fucking 
I'd, I'd go like to the hospital at the beginning of the semester. I'd go. I'd, 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 I'd plan for it. Absolutely. I'd be like, all right, I'm probably not going to do that. Yes. I'd be like, look, I had a lot of hospital visits this year. You can, just, and like, you got I, all I the documentation. You can show it every yeah. every which way. Yep. You just give me like. A C, like let me just yeah. give, like, or like, or just give me like an incomplete, like just don't fail me on this. Right, either. right. Okay, fine. Give me a shot. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, they they respect the fact that I was trying out there. I used to do. Uh, who was I? Was just talking with this recently. It might have been Rachel Feinstein on, on the on the last episode that just aired, uh, where when you know you're gonna skip a day of work, you gotta start seeding it earlier. So like, if you yeah. if you're gonna skip Friday for March Madness. Monday, you got to come into the office. <laughs> I got, I got this cough, you know. Tuesday, you gotta uh, like, you know, throw some water on your face, look like you're sweating. Wednesday is a doctor appointment. Thursday, you got you leave early. Friday, you're not coming in, and you've got a whole week's <laughs> worth of of quote unquote evidence showing that you're sick. That to me, that- and, and much like like we've talked about this with like Madoff before, like much like that. It's probably more work that we're Absolutely. doing rather than taking a vacation day. Yep, but it's fun. If I, if you, if if Madoff put all the effort he did into scamming money, he probably could have learned the markets and just made the money. But yeah. nah, fuck off. I don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> it's not as fun. <laughs> so the ultimate scam going on right now is Bishop Sycamore, one of my favorite stories of the year, one of my favorite sports stories of all time. Bishop Sycamore, fake school that dupes ESPN. I don't even think th- this all came to light. They flew too close to the sun when they went on ESPN because that's what yeah. exposed everything. But but ESPN, I can understand. They hired an outside uh, marketing Paragon, agency, right? pa- Paragon Marketing. They were the, they were like, come up with a high school matchup for us for this you know uh, season kickoff you know TV event. And they are the ones who come up with it, right? So Paragon is told that they have five D1 kids on Bishop Sycamore. They probably don't do too much more research. ESPN okays it. It gets on the air. That, it's obviously a, a major failure. But I understand that. More importantly, see, like... I, see, I would throw a Google search. I'm going to be honest. You tell me you're a D1 recruit, I'm, a, I'm just going to Google you real quick. Well, no, it's a failure of Paragon. But I think, like, if ESPN... If Paragon says to ESPN, we're good to go. I think they're like, we did our we we hired a whole okay. fucking company, you know. But more importantly, how did they continually dupe like all these high school leagues? How do they even play all these games? I mean, I guess it's just more of the same. They just like lie to someone who says, like, okay, sounds good to me. It's just people mailing it in everywhere. But I feel like it's more embarrassing for all the other people they duped, not just ESPN. ESPN at least tried to do the right thing. But how the fuck do they even Schedule ESPN, all the games. All, like, I, I think ESPN got wise to it pretty quick. Oh, real quick. Because on the, the broadcast, the clips I saw of the commentator yes. being like, "This is just, this, this isn't real. These two teams do not belong." Like he was calling it out. Yeah, I forget his name, but he was. Yeah, Tom. He was it was pretty- uh, Tom Luganbill, or I don't know how to say his last name, but it's Tom Luganbill, something like that. He was like, um, "Yeah, they said they have five D one recruits." And we're not only are we not seeing that on the field today, but we found no such thing in our research. Like there's not, right. you know, you look at all the the five star well, like, recruits the, and none of that. Wouldn't that research come up earlier? Because like you don't do that research live in game. Well, that's the thing. I bet it's like, I, I bet you the broadcasters who take their job seriously do the research, but their your first your first like notion isn't probably. This team isn't real. You maybe maybe right. you know maybe there's guys who have like, you know, I got an uncle or a father who like hypes me up as a D1 athlete and that gets into an article somewhere, but when you do your research it's not actually on the list. I bet you that happens somewhat, you know, like there's other examples of that, not just straight up fraudulent, you know, we're inventing. But the, I mean, some of the details, man. It's funny. I I I get hounded by people every single day when I post One Minute Man. These videos are too long. It's called One Minute Man. Why isn't it one minute? So now I've been doing them for one minute and everyone's like, this was way too short. I wanted more details on this. Like, fuck you guys. (laughs) But there really are endless details. My favorite being, they played two games in three days. They they said that they had a split squad. They said that they were using separate rosters for these games. And they would just have guys change numbers, but it was very clearly still the same player. And the guys are playing both, both ways, ways, right? So they played two games in three days, both ways, 
And that's where the announcers were like, not only is this like silly, but this is like dangerous. Like a kid could get and then mauled the coach, out there. The coaches refusing to have fucking running clock. They're down like 40 in the second quarter. And he's like, now nah, we're playing the full game. Like, what are you nuts? That's what I don't quite understand is I guess you want to – um. I guess you want to make it on ESPN and you want to get to the big stage, but why are you why are you trying to get games against IMG Academy, who you know is going to blow you out sixty five nothing? Just going to kick your fucking ass. Like yeah, it, yeah like this, this is some real. This is like the this coach doesn't seem to be a very good man. Like just oh, yeah. just hasn't read Icarus. Active like, active is, warrant out for his arrest. So yeah, he flies too close to the sun. Yeah, he like just like just stay off. Fucking one of the largest networks in the world. Right. Stay off that. And they probably like, could have kept going forever. Go around, fucking, go around, go around Northeast Ohio, wherever the fuck Canton is. Mm -hmm. Go around Northeast Ohio, play teams all you want. You probably make a couple of bucks off these kids who you're fucking scamming the shit out of. You like making them sleep on floors and rob fucking supermarkets to eat. Yeah. Dude, like the, that. They, but also, hang on, that's a little dramatic from the kid, right? I well, they I was gonna say so. The, the 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 bombshell expose came from complex and what i appreciate complex doing is they ran the interview they they transcribed the interview like as is so this is like a young kid he's speaking in slang he's cursing he's you know and they did it like word for word but it led to a lot of like well wait a minute what are the details of that story there like there wasn't much uh like follow up on things like he said there was a stabbing Wait, what? Like, where? When? Who stabbed who? On the field? In the house? In the Walmart? Like, you needed to. You needed to. I think those guys just wanted to rob a Walmart. I don't think that was necessarily too related to, to the they, school. I don't think they robbed it. I think they stole food from it. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Like, yeah. They, it wasn't like, it, like, give me all your fucking money. I think it was like we were stealing the, you know, the 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 yeah, frozen we were, food we were out of the pocketing some rotisserie chicken. Yeah. Oh, I told That's, you. You stole food. You didn't rob a place. I definitely think there was some theatrics on both sides. My favorite being, my favorite was. uh the coaches told us we were going to end maybe, up. On maybe they robbed it, but if they did, that's crazy. No, I, I, th I, I, think, I think that was more. I think that was more. We were promised we were going to have uh, the best, can, you know, the best of the best, the uniforms, the, the the facilities, the training. And he was like, "Bro, we didn't even have food. We had to go like scam Walmart for food." I think that's what he meant. But they, I, they, I they love those coaches telling him. Coaches saying. You're going to end up on Netflix. Oh, yeah, you are. Oh, yeah, you yeah, are. You For the wrong reasons, but I can guarantee you you're going to end up on Netflix. Green, dude. Which is also, by the way, the best thing. For, like, yeah. if you ask me, would I rather play – for a top-notch football, high school football program, unless you are like a truly, you're gonna make it to the league. Otherwise, would you rather play for the for IMG or would you rather play for Bishop Sycamore? And one day they're gonna do a fucking thirty for thirty on you and a Netflix special, and you're gonna be doing podcasts, and you're gonna be. I mean, this if this kid, I don't know if he's gonna. It doesn't seem like he is. But if he wanted to play his cards right, this dude could, you know, have his own fucking entertainment career because of this thing. <laughs> you know, like like all that takes, all it takes is one little credit, like. Who is this guy? Why are we watching his YouTube channel? Oh, he was on Bishop Sycamore. Okay, done. That's all it takes. Now I'm interested in you, you know? And I will say this. I I think I would say 50% of this story is the coaches who were sleazy but good scammers and uh, um, impressionable, gullible youth and uh, bureaucracy um you know, red tape and corruption that allows all this to happen. The other 50% is the name Bishop Sycamore. I swear to God, <laughs> that being their school name, it sounds so real and unique and regal. Like, oh, I play for Bishop Sycamore. Of course, that's a real school. Like, we got to put them on, on air. But I think it's all in the name, baby. It was great marketing. But it doesn't make any sense, right? right? Like, I, I guess I can't speak. I can only speak to like the bishops that are around my where I grew up, but like they're named after bishops. I, was there a, was there a sycamore? A I don't know. <laughs> like there's no such thing as a sycamore. Bishop like, sycamore. sycamore is not a name. It's a tree. Mr. Sycamore, come on down. I mean, it's a school that never existed for a team that barely could play uh, with a coach with a Wait, worn so, out his rest. Fuck that. People are clowning these kids. These these men. These are men. Yeah, I was gonna say these twenty one year old JUCO players who came back to beat up on fifteen year old freshmen. Bro, when I was twenty one years old, 
I would have gotten my fucking ass kicked by high school athletes. <laughs> yeah, that is like, true though, right? Like, like once you're out the game, I yep. guess these guys weren't technically out the games they played JUCO or whatever. Yeah. But like, if I if I was 21 years old and I like got to go back and play high school sports, I fucking wouldn't make the team. Where, where do you think the inflection point is? Because like, for a long time, just being the older kid meant you were better at sports. You know, if you're an eighth right. grader playing against second graders, you're gonna dominate. But if you give me that same six year difference, you know, later in life. You're, it's actually a detriment. So where, like, at what age do you think it becomes that? I don't know if it's an age. I think it's just like once you stop playing, right? Like when, right. when you are when you are fourteen and everyone else is twelve or ten, and we're doing the Danny Almonte thing, that like at least you're all playing every day. So you're just like, but once I turned eighteen and and the world told me my athletic career was free. Actually, no, not quite. A little baseball. But once I okay, once I turned nineteen or twenty, whatever age I was, and they told me like, like your athletic career is done. Um, I probably two years after that. You I think was, it was I though. I mean, b- baseball is is unique because I think it's a very like specialization game. But like, if you played some level of college ball, and you are now twenty like six, and you go back and play like high school basketballers, uh, uh like a high school basketball team, I feel like you could still beat up on them because you're just like a bigger man you still have your skills so it's probably like sport to sport no yeah it's probably sport to sport but i think there is such and maybe it's just me and maybe i'm just not as athletic as i, th- I thought i was when i was younger but like it's everything i do now i'm right on but i'm just off yeah, yeah like yeah, like yeah. when I, I i talk about like i got in the cage when we went to red sox Winterfest. yeah and i got in the cage it was like 60 and I hadn't swung a bat. This is probably two years ago. So I was 31. I probably hadn't swung a bat with any intent in over 10 years. And I fouled off every ball. It was right on every ball. Yeah. Every ball went right back. Yeah. But I did not put one in play. Right. And it's just like I think everything's just going to be like you're just a little bit off. And, that, and that's all of that's sports everything. though. Yeah, you lose an inch. You right. lose a, a half a mile. You lose like whatever. That means you now suck. But, <laughs> but, but I mean, how, how there wasn't a red flag – Last year, when there was there was highlights on like ESPN's on Sports Center's Twitter of Bishop Sycamore's quarterback slash linebacker who was <laughs> like three sizes bigger than everyone who was you know like <laughs> trucking people at, with a QB sneak and then laying them out when he was playing defense. It was like this is not real in high school football prep school stuff. Like what's happening here? The greatest scam yeah, of all time. QB and linebacker at a real school. It's just not a fucking thing, guys. That just does not happen. And that's Although probably I think where Brady might play linebacker this year for, for week for week four. Week four. He, he's going to want to make sure Mac Jones does poorly so <laughs> yes. badly that there's a chance Tom Brady soups up and plays linebacker week four. Dude, how? I knew he was going to want to hang a hundred. He might play linebacker. So I mean, I just I just want to give you a chance, by the way, to um, you know thank Cam Newton for all the. Super Bowls he won for you and all the great times you had with him. I know you guys were proclaiming him MVP and he was going back to the Super Bowl and whatnot under Cam. So any any last words yeah. for the Cam Newton era of, in New England? He issued in he, – he ushered in the second era. Like you said to Jason Biggs coming up shortly, you don't want to be the guy after the guy. You want to be the, the guy, guy after, after that the guy. guy. Yep. He set things up perfectly for Matt. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. <laughs> Set up the second time. <laughs> so, so, so technically, he did usher in more uh, Super Bowls for you. It just was ma- paving the way for Mac Jones, right? Yeah, that's what I was saying the whole time. Of course, of course. <laughs> get that? Silly me. Uh, John is right. Jason Biggs is coming up, as is Taylor Tomlinson. We got two interviews today that are both stellar. Jason Biggs, just one of my favorite guys in all of Hollywood. Uh, like just a normal ass dude. Who happened to get to fuck a pie? And that was really like, <laughs> and we talk about that amongst uh, his new foray into game shows as he's like yelling at his kids in the background of the Zoom. He's just like a regular ass dude who happened to come up during the golden age of Hollywood. And uh, and then there's Taylor who is just, the, the success that Taylor Tomlinson has, has seen at her age, quite simply put, is nauseating. It makes me, it makes me so jealous and so angry that she's doing a theater tour at the age of like twenty seven, uh, where you know most people it takes them till they're like fifty. So she is so well on her way. So two unbelievable uh, interviews coming up. Um, 
But I got to give you a little recap first uh, of my my Indian wedding. It was yes. a hell of a time this weekend. I got out there. I had a few uh, few soda pops, a few drinks, and the groom sent out an email before before the weekend started, saying uh, he had a couple things on his list, and he said one of them was no fucking around with drinking and driving. We're up here in the middle of nowhere. I don't want anyone driving on dark roads after you had a few drinks and. Uh, and he was very stern with it, and I, it was a great message for everyone at the wedding. Everybody followed, everybody uh, listened to him, and there was no nonsense. And that's what the National Highway Saft, uh, that's what the National Highway Safety Traffic Administration is asking you to do. NHTSA has uh, their Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. You've heard us talk about that a few times here on KFC Radio. Every time there's that's only rule going up. It's the, uh, Honestly, it really is. I remember my mom and dad being well, like, we need. they had, they had, uh, they would say things like, "Don't worry about like, you know, if you get in, in trouble with the with the teacher, like, worry about getting in trouble with me, because there are certain things that I care about." And it was like, "Don't get anybody pregnant, don't you know, uh, don't throw the first punch. You're allowed to throw the second punch, and don't ever drive drunk." And it was like, "Okay." And so, <laughs> NHTSA is here to remind you every holiday since Labor Day is upon us that um, you drive sober, you get pulled over because you could. Not only uh, kill somebody or hurt someone, you could also uh, end up just catching a case, going to jail, wrecking your car. Uh, just an endless amount of truly, really bad consequences for something that is entirely avoidable with the amount of uh, driving apps we have and taxi cur uh, services around. You want to be a baller like John, you can catch a helicopter these days. Yeah, why don't you just get an Airbnb or hit up Hotel Tonight? There's a million apps that one way or another help you uh, not get behind the wheel after you've been drinking. So oh, my dad, my dad will come get you. Yeah, Fight, Papa fights will come get you. He'll scoop you up. I was his, he's like, he's like, I don't care if you're drunk. I'll come get you. Yeah, not drive. All right. So uh, check out NHTSA. Uh, you can Google their drive sober or get pulled over campaign, or visit trafficsafetymarketing.gov today. Um, yeah, so like my best friend got married, marrying an Indian girl. So Friday night was this uh, like a like a smaller ceremony. It was kind of like a cocktail hour uh, mixed with um, they had like girls doing henna tattoos where all the girls got like tats on their arms. Yeah, one. I did not. That's for the girls only. So that's actually a very funny story. So so let me paint the picture. We're all dressed in tr Man, sorry. most underrated cookie in the world. The right? Fig Newton. The Fig, Newton, the Fig Newton, when you, here, here's the problem, let me tell you though, it's underrated, it's also very hit or miss, because often that box has been sitting on the shelves for quite some time, because it's so underrated, when you get an old Fig Newton, it's like dusty, and it's not good, when you get a fresh Fig Newton, it's not a cookie, it's, it's not a cookie, it's a cake, it is so soft, it's my favorite part about coming home, this is Fig Newton's my, at your, at your mom's house, that fucking, that pants not with Fig Newton. I, I'll, I'll polish off a row in the box like no fucking problem. And you know what? It feels like it's healthy, right? Fig Newton. That's not like, you know, yeah. it's not like a chocolate chip cookie. It's healthy for you. For sure not. It's like a jelly sandwich. Uh, I don't know. Like what? I, I once, uh, I feel like it was on TikTok or one of these, like, one of these apps. They once, remember when they were talking about how there's bugs inside of strawberries? Mm. There's some sort of shit with figs. Where, like, you can catch a bad fig and it's, like, loaded up with maggots or something. And I was like, ah, not reading that. And I don't care. I ain't losing my, my semi-annual Fig Newton. Don't care. Twice don't a year, I'm good. I, twice a year, I'm good for, like, 30 fucking Fig Newtons in one session. <laughs> um, so, I, I'm in. We're all in the traditional Indian wear. Most of us just got what's called a you know, Can I see a picture of it? Yeah. I, I, I've been kind of, like, hinting at asking you for a picture all week and you've been rebuffing my request. oh I, I have not been doing that on purpose i um let me see i actually don't have any from the wedding where i was wearing that but i have one from so when i was when i ordered it it arrived and i immediately tried it on and uh it was so you know different from everything i'm usually wearing that um immediately shay Six, five and a half year old girl goes, I got to take a picture of that. Give me your phone. <laughs> Which was crazy to me because now that means, I mean, she knows how to like, so she, I gave her the phone. I opened up the app for her, but she knew how to like take the picture. 
Um, <laughs> Shay's like, I gotta share this with my YouTube subscribers. <laughs> I, that's what it felt like. She's like, my followers are gonna love this. Um, <laughs> let me get this. I'm scrolling through my 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 text. You know how usually you can go to info up on your text and then all the pictures you've ever sent. That's not working for me. Okay, yeah. here here it is. Uh, copy. I am texting it to you right now as we speak. This is me trying it on at the house for Shay. Um, and we'll put this picture out. We'll put this in the YouTube. Go to go to KFC Radio uh, YouTube channel. You'll be able to see me in the traditional Indian wear. So that's what's called a kurta, John. And it's like a long shirt, like a long sleeve. Uh, goes down to your knees with uh, like five or six buttons. So I was wearing that. You can also go a step further. Oh, shit. I, I think it's pretty fucking fire. I, I kind of like it, man. I, I uh, like it was, I, I, I definitely picked out the color. Uh, you know me always with the blue. Like, I. Oh, I, I, Kevin, the second I saw this, I was like, well, someone wanted an eye day. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it wasn't like I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like, whatever, just get me, you know, just get me anything. I was like, let me check out what kind of designs and what kind of colors we got. I, uh. Bro. I didn't expect it to be this good. It's dope. I, it's I, very nice. Because you had told you had said something where like you said some of your other friends got more dressed up than you, but you just had on kind of like a like a baggy shirt. I, I honestly was picturing you in like a in like a free form shirt. No, like, no, 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 is, no, 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 like, no. With, like, baggy. This is so. This here, is here's nice. what happened though. I'm like because I think because Indian people people are a little bit of these smaller compared to us, like fat Northeastern Americans. Um, things were a little bit snug, and the pants that it came with, no shot. No shot, bro. These, I would have, if uh, the minute that I tried to get low on the dance floor, I would have ripped these pants in half. So what I paired it with was a pair of the uh, dark blue, navy blue, moon man lounge pants that we have on sale. It was like, the it, it, it matched the, the blue color scheme so well, and the pants that are underneath it are kind of like baggy and loose in the first place. So it all worked perfectly, but if you were paying attention, uh, there was a little moon man on my ankle. So <laughs> I don't know if that jives, but I rocked that, and I had a pair of, um, I have a pair of blue suede common projects that are not they are just flat out too small for me to wear they're like your small underpants so i really have to like cram my toes in there so i only wear them like once a year because they are just flat out like two sizes too small but the blue and the suede it all worked too perfectly so i was feeling you're myself like, you're like a, a, a chick at the wedding like once the reception really gets going the shoes come off i have a story there john i have a story about that don't you worry it's coming um so i'm feeling myself but I got a buddy who he went to step a step further. You can wear this kurta, and then on top of it is basically like their version of a blazer. It's the same length; it goes all the way down to like past your knees. But it's just a an overcoat, like a jacket that has like a different, like the same sort of collar. And then he had a scarf as well. So he's got this black and gold motif going with his with his uh, with the scarf down to like his knees. My buddy who went to Columbia got this one that was Columbia blue. They look like a pair of like satin pajamas. He got he got like legitimate silk. I don't even know how much he spent on his. We were we were like decked out. Me and my friends took it very seriously. Everybody were was enjoying it. I mean, it's it's great. If if every formal event I could ever go to from now on was like baggy pants and like a like a sleep shirt, I'd be like, "Fuck yeah, bro." <laughs> so, we get there and uh, the bride's family is awesome and we're talking to her uncle. His name was Ro, and he immediately starts talking. He's got this Queens accent. He's like, yeah, I mean, we don't even fucking dress up like this very often. Like, just very normal. Like, it was, they were an, an awesome time, but he was the one who said, come on in, guys. Um, we were the first ones there. Uh, and he's like, over here is the, like, where there's food. Over here is the drinks. And over here, if you would like to join us, is the henna tattoo station. <laughs> and I go... All right, let's do it. And he goes, oh, no, no, not for you. It's for the girls. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Like, of course, so telling that I'm like, ooh, where, what are the, like, what's available? And they're like, no, that's for the girls. I'm like, yeah, that checks out. That checks out. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah. So I was a little disappointed in that. I would have loved to get inked up. Well, you know what was funny, though? And, I, you know, most people, I think, know henna tattoos. I know them to be not permanent, but... Um, not, you know, just like your average 
you know, rub some rub a so uh, a yeah, sponge on it, not, right? It's not you fucking wet it, right? Really. But they did it, and then the girls were done. They were like, okay, so that'll be uh, that'll come off in like a week and a half. And I was like, oh, oh, I, I thought it was longer than that. I didn't know. I I thought it was also though. If you, I guess I don't know if you like. There was a couple girls who definitely got it who were like, oh, I didn't. I didn't know it'd be like you know I got like a presentation next week or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but so everyone's got it like uh, to the nines, and I'm I'm sitting here like I just want uh, I just want a head of tattoo. I'm like no no no, that, that's for the ladies, you chump. Uh, anyway, the wedding ends up being amazing. It was truly like one of the nicest weddings I've ever been to. It was so different. It was out in the in the woods where like they there was I think they do like a brush fire to, on on purpose, like a controlled one to get rid of like all the bushes and shit. So there was just rows of super tall thin straight trees i don't even know what kind of trees these were but it looked like something out of a movie uh and they get they got married in front of that uh really cool uh, the, the the reception was in the, uh, like a barn that had like multiple levels all that's good and then at the end john they're like to finish up the night come join us for a bonfire where we can make s'mores and smoke cigars <clears throat> i'm gonna send you a picture of the bonfire john it was. Dude, this is. I gotta get an Indian friend. If we got any Indian schoolies <laughs> listening to the KFC radio, like, and you're getting married, invite me. I want. I want to go. You I would. Saw, you like, would go Akash all Akash out with. Married. Yeah. Oh, Akash did it real big. He had like a real I big saw Indian Akash wedding. wedding like, yep. I'm talking about this one. Like, I want to fucking. I want to do one of these. Check out the picture I just sent you, bro. This was the bonfire for s'mores. It's what? the biggest goddamn fire I've ever fucking seen. I swear to God, it was. Bro, and it, the live video is the live photo is crazy. I mean that. Yes. This thing, <laughs> bro, I just called the fire department. Look at yeah. Like, well, this can't be safe. I honestly think that uh, I I don't know if the groom was joking, but I think at one point he said like surrounding people have called the cops. It was so big, uh, and so we get there again first on the scene. I don't like to be late for things. And it's it's roaring. First of all, you can feel that heat from like a hundred feet away, like a lot. Like it was like intense heat on yeah. my face. And I'm thinking, God damn, I don't respect what firefighters do enough. Like that was, you know, this is a big fire, but it's like a controlled thing. Imagine a whole fucking house like that, and you're running into it, crazy, right? So everybody wants their s'mores, and they got this dope setup with they got these really really long like toothpicks, the fatso extra large marshmallows. Tons of Hershey bars, tons of graham crackers, and everybody's like kind of drunk and they're partied and they want their s'mores. The and you can't get close. Well, that's the thing. What you're supposed to do is, you know, you set up this like TP shape of the of the wood, and it burns, and then eventually it collapses in, and then it becomes more like wider but lower, and then you can have like then it's like a giant campfire. Well, we're a bunch of dumb drunk people. And we're just people are just trying to get get into this and fucking roast their marshmallows, you know, maybe three feet away. Maybe the the, the, the toothpick was like a yardstick. And there was like one person uh, who worked there on the scene being like, um, just just give it a just give it a couple more minutes. And people were just like, nah, man, I'm going in. People are. <laughs> I, and I watched this one girl. She was covering her eyes with the one hand. <laughs> Leaning in to the bonfire with the other while looking away and trying to keep her body out. And then her, her, her s'more caught on fire and she starts waving it and like an ember is like hitting her in the face. And I'm sitting and I'm watching all of my friends who are all just like dumb drunk morons who are craving this so badly that they're willing to run up on like a five alarm blaze. And I'm just sitting like on the like the hill of grass, well away from everything, being like I just don't need a s'more this bad. I, it's just a <laughs> s'more. Relax. And then eventually it did collapse. And, but we, all my dummy friends were like around there. So it falls in. I was like, you guys are going to get engulfed by fire. Just give it five more minutes. And what was really funny was there was also the cigar table. So they had those torch uh, lighters. So I just yeah, yeah. I just sat there and I just torched my own with the fucking handheld lighter. <laughs> I was like, I'll be over here just doing a s'more with a lighter while you guys you know set yourself on fire. No big deal. <laughs> it's it was a great wedding though, man. And the 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 like Indian portion of it. I wish both nights. The second night was was American, and I was back in a suit. Here, how about this for just getting completely 
bullied and, and, and you know, bowled over as we tend to do. I put on my suit. Uh, it's my blue suit. You know, in the barstool world, I feel like people only own suits for, like, bad, bad things. It's either a wedding or it's, like, a funeral or you're going to court or something bad. None of us are really in the <laughs> suit game other than Dave. Um, so I pulled out my, my divorce, uh, my divorce suit and I put it on <laughs> and it's pretty tight. Uh, you know, it was, po it was, pre Bro, I'll be honest. If I was having a wedding, I'd be like, you're not allowed to wear the divorce suit. Because it's it just because it, it, it means bad. That's a good. That's a great point. <laughs> that's a great point. Well, I'll tell you what, John. I've only had two. I only have two like real nice suits, and they've both been to divorce court dates. So uh, that's it. You're shit out of luck. You're getting one of them. So um, I put it on. I go to the tailor, and I I expected it to not even be close to fitting, but I pull it up, and I'm like, mm, and I kind of like put it together, and I and I'm able to. And the tailor goes like, ah, it's not that bad. Like, you don't, it's not really worth it. He's like, I, I would only have to take out like half an inch. It's not like I need to do like a major overhaul here. So I don't think it's worth it. And I'm standing there in the, like the laundromat in like the little changing room. And I, and I, I see what he's saying. I like kind of agree. I'm like, yeah, he's really not going to do that much. So yeah, fuck it. Then the day comes and I put it on and I'm like, I'm just wildly uncomfortable. And why? <laughs> he was like, you know, it'll only be a half an inch. And like, but half an inch was what I needed to be able to tuck my shirt in and move around and stuff. So because the tailor was like, eh, it's not like I have to do six inches here, bud. I just let him talk me into being uncomfortable the whole night. Like, why the fuck did yeah, I do of that? Course. Well, of course. Of course. Because well, you're a normal person, Kevin. Because <laughs> you're not going to make someone do something they clearly don't want to do. Right. Like, I'm like, all right, fuck it. Fine. I'll be uncomfortable so you don't have to take a half inch out of my pants. Wouldn't that be the dream, though? Take a like, half inch out of my pants. You wouldn't be the first one. Hey, hey. Wouldn't you rather just, like, I would imagine, it's probably one of those things, like, whether I take six inches or half an inch, it's, like, the same amount of work. But I don't know. Probably not. It's, like, you can do, you could probably do this tailor job in a fraction of the time, charged me the same amount, and instead you just kind of shamed me into leaving it, and then the whole night, like, I couldn't bet. I, I, I was like, if I drop my phone or drop something, it, it's in, it belongs to the earth now. Someone else has to pick this up for me. <laughs> I, I ain't going down there. Just just classic yeah, no self-respect. <laughs> yeah, that's like, what, exactly like you, that. You're folding it off the top of your shoe and then kicking it into the air, grab your phone back. Dude, I'll tell you, getting fat is and old is the worst. Not just like, I mean, yeah, if you get like, really fat, of course that sucks. But, you know, just the, the like, oh yeah, love handles or man boobs or just things like that where it's just like, ugh, I'm just constantly uncomfortable and self conscious now. Great, great. It sucks. Yeah, great. It's the worst feeling, man. I, 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 I that's the, the worst thing about getting old is the subtly like getting fat and ugly. It's, it's not fun. Um, all right, so let's do Am I the Assholes, then voicemails, then both of our interviews. we got a lot to get to, so we'll start whipping through it. Uh, today's Am I the Assholes brought to you by Nomad Goods. Nomad sent over a boatload of stuff for us, everything ranging from iPad and iPhone cases to uh, wallets and credit card holders. The, I the iPhone charger they sent me is the most valuable thing in the world because it's one of those ones that's like a, a, a braided cable cord so like it's not going to get frayed and, and fall apart at the end there the most valuable thing in the world i made the mistake of leaving a bunch of fucking nomad on my desk <laughs> god everyone stole it all the vultures swoop in you cannot leave anything of value it's you know that's kind of crazy that it's just like here's something that i like and was planning on using that i just left on my desk and you guys all took it what <laughs> What? Like it's on my desk. What are you talking about? Like if you I take my stuff. If I left like a hat on the desk, are you just gonna take it and put it on your head? Like, <laughs> you know, like clothes. Sometimes I'll grab a t-shirt because like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do a one minute man, and that's the sponsor, and John's got some on his desk. Let me pop it on. But there are certain I don't things. Care what you think, stuff. But but in general, you like take all you want. Yeah, things. But I'm saying things like that sometimes feel a little bit communal at Barstool. But not like a wallet and an AirPod case and all those things. Like this is expensive, nice stuff that was sent to me that you just felt like you could take for what fucking reason? 
like, right. like what else is fair game? You're just going to take all of my things? But that's how it goes here in Barstool. It's something like Nomad is going to get scooped up real quick because they make uh, high-quality gear that, that fixes all of, like, the problems – like that your other stuff has like like the iphone cord or the phone charger cord you know they were sick of cords that break and fray and rip apart they fixed it uh you, you know you're sick of the uh, of a, a wallet that doesn't have enough like slots for your credit cards they fixed it small sleek stylish but still functional uh they've they've got all sorts of high quality leather goods uh that are ultra rugged and minimalist, yet looking stylish and fashionable with long-lasting materials, uh, all of the highest quality. All of the concepts are, de are designed from the ground up, uh, so everything, they can pass along all of the savings. And it all started from a Kickstarter back in 2012, so they have been, uh, they built it, you know, from the ground up, like I said, and are creating things with all that in mind. So, uh, go to nomadgoods.com, that's N-O-M-A-D. G O O D S dot com slash KFC. Nomadgoods.com. Live the nomad life with high quality leather from ha uh, Horine Tannery in Chicago. That's all climate neutral certified. It's all high quality and safe. That's nomadgoods.com slash KFC. Today's Am I the Asshole? Let's go. Am I the asshole if I went to an Indian wedding and I called the traditional garb a costume? Yes, you are an asshole. Uh, am I an asshole if I said this is like a slumber party? Yes, you are an asshole. Um, let's see. Okay, so today's we start with uh, a couple of these we already know ahead of time. This one we only know the the title. Am I the asshole for faking food poisoning to teach my boyfriend a lesson? Now let's place our bets going into this. Are you gonna is the girlfriend the asshole or the boyfriend? <laughs> this is tough because of the girlfriend boyfriend dynamic, but typically when someone needs to be taught a lesson, they are the asshole. I I'm gonna go the opposite way and say like depending on how much she committed to this, if she was like faking puking and like making it like scary, like she was really sick. I think that's a little bit too far, but also, like we said earlier, you know, the snake it till you make it. The you know, Costanza going to the solarium, going out to the house in the Hamptons. You, you gotta, you gotta commit. So let's see. Oh, see, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. The further she went, the less of an asshole. <laughs> All right. So my boyfriend, twenty six, and I, twenty six. Oh no, sorry, my boyfriend, twenty eight, and I, twenty six. Both love to cook food, and we're very good at it. We often make meals together, and it's something we really bond over. However, he has serious issues with cross-contamination that drives me insane. As a result, I feel like I have to constantly keep an eye on him to make sure that he's sanitizing things properly. It frustrates me, I feel like I have to watch him, and it frustrates him when I point out something he's done that seems unsanitary. Last Friday, we were making carnitas, and I noticed he was using the same knife and cutting board that he had used to chop up the pork to then chop up onions and radishes. I could literally see- What? I could literally see red splotches on the cutting board from where the meat had been sitting. I pointed that out. Uh, I said uh, I pointed out that whenever I need to cut both meat and produce, that I always do the produce first, so that way I can use the same knife and cutting board without worrying about cross contamination. He flipped out and said, "It's not like it's chicken." I said, "So what? It's still raw meat, and there's still potential for foodborne illness." He wouldn't let it go, so finally I was like, "Fine, I'll eat your tainted fucking produce." which pissed him off further. He stormed off into our bedroom, refused to co finish cooking with me, yada, yada, yada. Without him knowing, I cut up new onions and radishes for garnishing, and we ate dinner separately. The next day, we're supposed to go to his parents' place as they were hosting a congratulatory dinner because my boyfriend recently got a new job. In the morning, I faked being ill and hung out in bed watching Netflix and reading most of the day. He seemed baffled by me being, quote, sick, and I was like, I don't know. I mean, I did eat those onions and radishes you were so pressed about. He looked irritated after, but I, uh, but he seemed to believe I was actually sick. When it came time to start getting ready to head out, I said I was too ill, ended up staying home. His mother messaged me later on, explaining that it was extremely rude of me to have missed the dinner and that I should have taken some Pepto-Bismol or something so that I could be there to celebrate with them. I didn't bother responding when my boyfriend returned home that night. I could tell he was bummed. I do feel guilty about missing the dinner since it was important to him, but it was also at my wit's end and tried to talk about the contamination thing many times in the past. Uh, yada, yada. Am I the asshole? Well, now, you, yeah, now you, you, you screamed out what pretty, pretty violently. Well, 
So the, 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 the kicker here is that, like, it's an important dinner. Like, That's if you just, if, by far if the that, most important thing. If that dinner, if it was just a regular old night, she's not the ass. I if, I agree that the that missing the dinner is is the worst part. But I now you went nuts. Like are you, you you would really freak out that bad if I was if I was using something that I that touched that touched the raw meat? Kevin, I was in the hospital for a goddamn month with E. coli. I'm pretty sensitive to these things. <laughs> Bro, you were seven. Stop being such a pussy. That was like thirty years yeah. ago. But like like I still like I are you kidding me? You're gonna cut a fucking you're gonna cut produce with the fucking same knife you cut raw meat with? Absolutely not. I don't even let Kevin, I don't even let you use the same goddamn cutting board yes, for produce said, and meat. She said the Different same thing. cutting board. I'll tell you what Different I do. Cutting. I'll tell you what I do. Uh half the time I don't even really bother to get out a cutting board and it's just like on a paper plate. Uh I will cut it, I will cut the meat, cut whatever. Uh, and then I will probably take a paper towel and do one of these, like, shink, you know, just rub it up, oh and then I'll cut. Yeah. Yeah. Just being honest. Oh, Lord, now, it's it's very rare. He does I'll... not know what he does. Huh? I said, oh, Lord Jesus, he does not know what he does. <laughs> you can't be doing this, Kevin. Uh, here's the thing. Here, <laughs> you're you're going to – you know what's going to happen? Jay's going to end up in the goddamn hospital on Christmas. Oh. The doctor's going to be like, have you eaten any raw meats? And, you, and he's going to be going, no. And Kevin's going to go, yeah. Brother. Yeah, she might have eaten some contaminated meat. Brother, if you think that anything I cook for my kids involves a cutting board and a knife and cooking, it's fucking pre-cooked chicken nuggets in the air fryer every night, bruh. There ain't no contaminating <laughs> pasta, okay? But uh, that's actually one of the funniest things. Uh, uh, there's there's like a template that a lot of elementary schools and preschools use where uh, for Mother's Day, it, you fill out – the kids fill out these things. And it's like, I love my mom the best because she – and people say like, plays whatever with me and da-da-da. And, and a few of the moms in our friend circle all posted and it said like, my mom is the best when she cooks me and like three different moms had toast. As the answer, <laughs> so like Shay, Shay, and a few other kids all said, "My mom cooks me toast." It's like, oh great, there's the chi- <laughs> we're the child neglect parents over here. Anyway, <laughs> give me credit because I do in the moment say to myself like, "Ah, oh, fuck, that that touched the meat, oh, but that you know that knife is like serrated or you know whatever." Okay, whatever, I'm just gonna use it again. But I do think of it. How? Well, how far are you from the sink? You just give it a quick wash. Oh, I'm literally right next to the sink, John. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. in the in, in this this display you just showed to me, you're looking around like, where should I possibly do something? Yeah, no, it's just right. Put the water on. Oh, okay, John. Quick, quick, John, can quick. I counter you for a second? You're sure. literally you're literally standing at the toilet. Why don't you just lift the seat? I don't know. It's the same thing. It's just like eh, whatever. No, it's not the same thing at all. Because the fucking piss on the seat can't poison me. It's a super different thing. Yeah. I was, I was like, this is. There's a very clear rebuttal to this. I wonder if he's gonna say it. Yeah, yeah. This, the toilet doesn't cause <laughs> the toilet doesn't cause you to be violently ill. Yeah, correct. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, she would be the asshole if I think she's the asshole if she didn't miss a big dinner. Because I think you're kind of being. You know what is at the root of this? Not even that you could get sick or whatever. This is chef snobbery. That's what's going on here. This is like we both like to cook. Snobbery? Yes. It's like this we, is just... This no, John. You're yeah, just... No. John, you are an E. coli pussy. Just shut up. This is about two chefs... <laughs> Got to hit those figgies. Got to hit those figgies, baby. This is about two people who fancy themselves to be chefs from the food world and you got to follow the rules and she's the better chef because she does it if it was just like she missed a day with the friends i would say you're an asshole for making a big deal out of it because there was a there was a important event um she's the asshole but can i tell you who also is an asshole here the fucking mom we get this a lot we get a lot of these on emma the asshole where like mothers are texting their their in-laws, if you will, even if it's a boyfriend or girlfriend, like playing the in-law role, being like like yelling at them, like as if it was their kid. I don't know if that happens often in most relationships. Like, if if I get my my girlfriend's mom coming at me, we got there's problems, bro. Like you shut the fuck up. You're not my mom. 
If I get my girlfriend's mom coming to me, I got a next girlfriend. That's what I'm saying. And I mean, maybe if you, maybe if you and, miss and, like and, something and, really and important, mom, you know, like, I, if my mom's ever going get my girlfriend, like, I mean, what the hell absolutely. are you talking about? Right. Like, do not, you go through me again in Seinfeld reference. It's like, you know, you need Jerry for both Elaine and George. They can't go, you know, you need, you need that, that connection. Maybe if you miss something really important and the mom says something like, oh, that was, you know, unfortunate, but to be like, who do you think you are and all that shit? It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Who the fuck do you think you are? But I also, you know, I'm divorced and all this shit, so what do I know? Maybe, maybe this is what regular relationships no, are, but... No, I think you're right here. Like, I, 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 I don't think my mom has, like, anyone's number. Like, like any yeah. of my... I don't think my mom's ever had any of my girlfriend's numbers. Like, she couldn't... If yeah. she wanted to, she couldn't reach out to them. Well, that's, like, that's the problem is usually when you... When you reach that point, it's like you are married or you are like very serious. And but these, they're just dating, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But twenty eight, yeah, maybe they've yeah. been around for a while. I don't know. But I mean, I get, I'll get, I, I got text messages from my ex mother in law after everything. Oh lord, did I get text messages from them? But not like during, like you know, in our business or whatever. Like while well, we're still dating, fuck that. So I, I'm gonna throw in a little sneaky. You're also the asshole to the to the mom there. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> let's go with yeah, you're the one you got. Right. Girlfriend is mad. Girlfriend twenty six is mad because I twenty seven male was on Tinder, but she's got it all wrong. I've not, not read this. I I, I'm going to venture to guess that she does not have it all wrong, and that this is going to be a <laughs> lot of justifying why this dude is still on a dating app. But prove me wrong, brother. What do we got? It starts with so, which means yeah, this guess what, bro? Fucked. You're fucked. Yep. yep. <laughs> so I fucked so. this girl from Tinder, but <laughs> go ahead. All right. So basically, my girlfriend got me on Tinder, and I know that sounds bad, but it's all a big one, a big misunderstanding. Let me explain. I'm a UI developer, which is user interface. interface? User interface, yeah. Yeah. Uh, user. I'm a user interface developer. The company I work for designs mobile apps for other companies, and we were put on this project the other day. It's a b big deal, and as such, I wanted to make sure that the end product was executed flawlessly. I decided to do some research in my off time and made a point to download and examine the UI of every app of every app that I could. <laughs> All <Okay>. of the apps. <laughs> I wanted to see what worked and what didn't. Social networks apps, news apps, banking apps, you name it. I studied them all in stupidly dating apps. I'm, you're starting to lose the thread here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my girlfriend was using my phone the other day, and she noticed that I had downloaded Tinder. She immediately started freaking out. When I finally got a chance to explain that it was for work, she calmed down a bit. But then she opened the app and immediately started crying because I stupidly had made a profile. I explained to her that having an account was a key component of the app <laughs> and we were contracted to develop. So of course I had to make a profile in order to fully evaluate the user mechanics. And it was no different than the <laughs> accounts I had made for YouTube and Bank of America. She trusts me and knows that I'm serious about my work so she accepted this explanation until she saw that I, stupidly again, had actually matched with women. <laughs> And I and I told her and I told her that's an important part of the app to understand how you connect. So I had to do it. And then again, I stupidly met them at a hotel bar and fucked them because I had to see what the app was. I had to see if the app truly looked like the person uh, on the on the screen. So I had to meet them in person, and then I had to test if her pussy felt like what she described in her bio. Stupidly, I know, but I mean, come on, bro. Dude, I, I admit I admitted to her it looked bad, but that I was truly trying to evaluate the functionality and my interest in it was strictly professional because if this project goes right, the bonus I could get could change our lives. I wanted every perspective I could. At this point, I realized we were barreling towards a cliff and tried to avert disaster by explaining to her that, that before she opens my inbox, she should know that the chat component is a huge part of the upcoming project. There it is. <laughs> there it is. I swear to God. Go ahead, keep going. I swear they're going to play out everything I just said. Unreal. And she can check my messages to Facebook friends and door dash delivery drivers because I was just as friendly to them. She wasn't having it at this point and stormed out of my apartment. 
<laughs> I get it looks bad. I realize now that I should have left out the dating apps in my research, but sometimes I take work too seriously for my own good. Is this sal salvageable? Do you think I showed her this? Do you think if I showed her this post, she would understand? Or is her trust broken forever? Edit. I guess it would be relevant to mention that she has trusted in a previous relationship. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it would be relevant that uh, I cheated on her before. Um, <laughs> I, 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 part of me thinks. You know, obviously, Jesus Christ, dude, you you you're a clown. But this is the snake it till you make it episode, I guess, because <laughs> this idea there is. Let me just say this: there's like a crack of daylight. There's like a smidge that he can work. I think it's bigger than that. Yeah, I think I think I think there's. I think there's a gap. The he's, door's open. He's got to hit the hole hard. Yeah, yeah. But there's a hole there. Right, he's right. Gotta hit a hard. Like, like if you can show your girl <laughs> that you have messaged DoorDash users and sent, like, I'm, tr I mean, let me look at some of the other apps on my phone here. That, like, if I could, if I, if you saw that I was like giving uh, feedback to like my Audible audiobooks app. And that I sent a message to my Chase banking people, and uh, my Park Mobile uh, thing has me DMing people for customer service, and all this other shit. There is, there's some room, there's some wiggle room there to be like, look, I tested out all of the popular apps, including using their features up to and including their messaging services. I mean, if, if this dude has messaged one DoorDash DoorDash driver, I'm in. I'm in. He's, he's fine. I, I've been using DoorDash for the better part of a decade. I think I have not messaged <laughs> never. a single person. No, you could. Ever. I didn't know you fucking could use the, a messaging service there. If I, uh, I think that's why I refrain from like having her look at my Facebook messages with my friends to be like, hey, I use this too. Yeah, that's uh, not a that good one. Idea. Yeah, no fucking. Shit. We all went to college one time, um, but it is. There's some. I room. think if you're if you are a philanderer, I think the move is to go into yeah uh, a, a a UI based field. Yeah, I was, I, this is I was just gonna say this. It's not even if you're uh, if you're a philanderer. Yeah, no, I guess it is. If you if you want to sleep around, you need to change your career to anything that involves you testing out technology. And then you can forever play this card. I was just thinking that. You might maybe, and usually those guys who are doing app development or whatever are super smart. Maybe those guys are just geniuses and they've just been fucking for years. And they're like, ha, all these fucking schmucks, schmucks in the sales department get caught cheating on all their wives. And we're over here in UI just having a blast because guess what? We message everybody. We talk to every app. It's pretty fucking brilliant. And also, I got to say. He wasn't clear with what he was talking about. Yes. I was going to say. I you, that's, you need, that's another thing, though. If you're going to do it, you need to send some messages that are like, Hi, just just like testing this out. Like, can you please reply or some shit like that? I'd be like, look, honey, like that chick with the fat ass and like huge tits on on Tinder. Look, all I said to her was like, test, 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 one, two, three. Like, hey, are you enjoying your experience on this app? Yes, I, I just 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 for research purposes, are you enjoying this? Show them that, and then you have the other ones where you're doing your dirt. It's pretty goddamn brilliant. But I, I, I you always throw in the caveat with these, much like everything in life. What does this guy look like? Who? What? Is, how does this guy carry himself? You know, because you know, if if he is like looking, you know, looks like fucking Zuckerberg, and he's like, "Honey, I was checking out the user interface of my uh, of my fan base." You know, it's like, yeah, you were. If he, you know, he looks like a fucking hot shot. If he looks like Tommy Fury, who's just too good looking to be alive, by the way, then I think we can rest assured that he's smashing all these girls on Tinder. So you got to put it all together. But I'm going to say, based on this evidence, you know, if you tell me that some of the messages were like, send me a picture of your ass or something, you know, obviously I, my, I, will, I will change my mind. But currently speaking, I'm going to say, not the asshole, reserve judgment, you know, reserve the right to call you an asshole with like a smidge more of evidence. This could go the other way. Dude, you know what? I, I got to tip my cap to, and this is why I kind of lean with him as well. Is he told her? Mm -hmm. I'd love to be a fly on the wall. When like, like, all right, you saw the Tinder. Oh, you opened it? All right, you saw the profile. 
uh, and then it's like, oh, you saw I match with somebody? And like, I, I would let that, I'd keep letting that ride, but he went, Hi. Right, just to get into this one. Yes, uh, that's it. Like, getting ahead of the story. <laughs> Control the narrative. Now, before you look at my inbox, you're going to see some things. <laughs> but let me explain. Just so you know, yeah. there's going to be a lot of messages in there. <laughs> you know, I, I spoke with my boss, and he told me I had to really uh, go undercover and act like I was truly using this uh, as, as the users would. So I sent him a picture of my dick because that's what the kids do. I'm sorry, honey. It was just for work. Kind of brilliant, man. All right, last one. Um... This one is, this one is great. I love this one. Am I the asshole for telling my friend that he got exactly what he wanted and that he needs to stop being selfish? I have an old college friend, Nick, 32 male. He has a fiance, Sophie, 24 female. They've been together three years and Nick has repeatedly suggested an open relationship to which Sophie has refused until a few months ago when she, until a few months ago when he said he'd only propose if she agreed to try an open relationship. By the by, before we get any further, you you if you ask to be in an open relationship, you cannot put that toothpaste back in the tube. You ask that question, and you either are now in an open relationship or you are broken up. That's it. <laughs> there, there, you, your girl cannot say no. Let's just keep up with this monogamy thing and think that that's all good. If someone, right. it's actually it's actually the other way around. Not if you ask. If you have been asked. You are either you agree and you're in an open relationship or you break up because that guy or girl is going to fuck somebody. So the <laughs> idea that she just said, no, no, no. And then also, if you're going to hold the ring hostage, you know, this should just be a full blown preemptive breakup. But she agreed to get the ring. And I said to him at the time that he was an ass for it and that he was just acting in his own best interest. She put that in quotes, uh, thinking that's going to matter. Uh, he was, quote, acting in his best interest. Now, Nick wanted an open relationship so he could see Anna, 29-year-old female, a girl he knew from college who he always had a thing for, but she was married from when he was 18 to 26, so he never had a chance until recently. He hasn't uh, had a chance to see her yet because she had been living with her sick... Uh, now the issue is that Nick showed up at my house last week with a suitcase absolutely livid and asked to crash on my couch. He said Sophie had gone out to dinner and had sex with a male model and that she was cheating because he hadn't had the chance to see Anna and it was unfair for her to see someone so much hotter than Anna. Not that Hannah... Oh, so that... So, because she hadn't seen the chance... He hadn't seen the chance to see Anna. Okay. So, uh, and that it was unfair for her to see someone so much hotter than Anna. I basically laughed at him and told him that this is exactly what's going to happen and that he was being selfish, expecting Sophie not to see anyone or to see people less attractive than her. Um, she's attractive, but I don't know why she's with Nick, to be honest. He went off on me for not being supportive and stormed out as he's trying to turn our friend group against me for not supporting him. I've taken a few days off to think about it, but I still can't decide. I mean, this is exactly like, be careful what you ask for. This is this is the biggest no brainer. Uh, he's not the asshole. The friend. The friend is not the asshole. No, no, yeah. The guy yeah. who asked for an open relationship and then your girl go gets piped out by a hot dude. That's on you, bro. You brought this upon your fucking self. Bro, you know what though? Hot dude wouldn't bother me. <laughs> okay. What would bother me is a guy. This, this, I, I dealt with this very recently. Okay. Very recent. Did you really? I was I was talking to a friend's mom, and uh, she was talking about uh, my friend's new boyfriend. Okay. And she's dated a bunch of guys before, and and they're always you know they're always talking and, and whatever. Right. And and she said he's so fucking funny. I love him. Oh and no. I was like, I was like, he's what, like, motherfucker? Oh, right fucking there. Yeah. I'm the funny guy <laughs> in this life. Yeah. Okay? Like, like, like if, he, if she was like, he's so handsome, I'd been like, fine, no problem. She, if she was like, he's so smart, I'd be like, fine, no problem. That shit doesn't bother me. But when you come into my fucking territory. Now we got issues. Now we got if, issues. If, if fucking Anna or whatever, so funny, what's it, whatever the girlfriend's name is, if she'd come home and been like, she's like, I fucked the hottest guy back. Like, good for you. Yeah. She was like, he don't, he don't have no personality. She's like, this guy had me in stitches at dinner. I'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> who, who is he? Where does he live? <laughs> if I catch my girl fucking some dude who's like kind of out of shape and like a little bit like a 
you know, pessimistic and angry all the time and crack some jokes, we got fucking problems, okay? Now we got problems. Now, now it's time to knuckle up, brother. So you would rather... <laughs> You would rather in a relation, open relationship, or let's say you break up and like the first guy that she fucks afterwards, you'd rather it be like a dime, a ten. I, I wouldn't uh, rather than being a funny guy. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm not like rooting for it, but if it if the if it's I have to pick one of the two. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because you know I was never the hot guy. Right. You, you never. That's not your game. You didn't beat me in my game because yes. you're hot. Yes. You got to be funnier than me to beat me in my game. That's like you um, won your game. Fine, good for you, but you didn't win my game. Absolutely. That's like, uh, you know, if you're, um, you play professional basketball and someone's a better hockey player than you, you're like, well, yeah, whatever. That's not my shit. Of course you're better at me than that. Come on my, come in my world and then, you know, we'll see what's up. So yeah, you, you almost want to have, and to be honest, do you think, you know, people say like hot chicks don't, aren't that good in bed because they just lay there. That's like a mm. trope, you know? You think that applies for... And I think that's true in some cases. I think there are also plenty of hot chicks who just are like... They exude sex and they like to fuck and they're like slutty in bed and all that. Do you think that... I it, say, I've, I've, I've had sex with a fair amount of hot women in my day. I haven't run into the dead fish one. No, but... But, you know, I also... I, I subscribe to the idea of like... Ugly girl head. You know, like an ugly chick is gonna come out of blowing you looking like she, you know fell into a fucking <laughs> vat of, of fucking you know what I mean like you when you when you're ugly and you gotta earn it I've never, I've never got a ugly girl no but but I think you can understand the logic of like you alright but, but, but you've been the ugly guy have you ever been like I gotta fucking I'm gonna go down on this chick and put on a performance to make sure necessary. <laughs> <laughs> we we've been the ugly guy I say that because I'm in the same boat like, don't you think Wait, that there's? You said the ugly guy. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever gone out on a date, or I know you've said you've like never gone on a date, but have you ever done something oh, with a female where it's like, I gotta up my game. I gotta make sure I dress right. I gotta make sure I do the, you know, go to the right place. I gotta make sure I, I get the job done in bed because I got, I need I mean, to make her like me. To the, to the, to the average amount. You know, I, yeah, I've never gone crazy. Like, I've never freaked out like above and beyond. Uh, like, like anyone who's going out with a person, I've been concerned with my outfit and where we're going. Yeah, right. I guess but, I guess it's something. Never, like, the crazy now. I guess I've never really proven it true one way or the other. Because you're right. Any any time I feel like I've seen hot girls or been with hot girls, those are girls who they're hot because they put they put work into themselves because they want other people to think they're hot, right? And I think that usually applies to sex as well. You want to be, you want to be known as the hot girl. You want to be known as the girl who fucks. You know what I mean? So like that, if you're vain, uh, or narcissistic, or or are doing it for your uh, perception, you'll probably want to make sure you're good in bed too. But I think there's a line there where it's like, you'll do, but you're not gonna do, you know, all that. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna do everything in bed that. Some other girls would maybe have to be like, okay, I'm gonna have to do this to keep him around. If he, if I want a second, I, I, if I want him to come back in bed, I remember there was a girl. This wasn't more about uh, looks; it was about um, whether you're dating or married and hooking up. And uh, it was a girl who was engaged, and they were talking about when a girl puts her own finger in her ass when you're fucking, and she was like, "You see this finger? This finger has a ring on it." I don't put my own finger in my ass anymore. You know, it was like, <laughs> I've done that. We, like, I've earned this. So I think there are certain kinky behaviors that depend on where you're at in life, who you are, and what you look like that I think holds true. But I, but you're right. I don't think I've ever seen it proven out. It just logically makes sense to me. But that doesn't mean that it happens. Yeah. I think it's one of the, I, again, like, I don't know. I, I've done a fair amount of research on it. Yeah. Happen run into it. Yeah, because because also and then so the reason I asked my my original question was, do you think that applies to guys? And I think that hot guys, like we're talking truly like hot guys, fuck a lot. And the more sex you have, just the more you get better at it. You know what I mean? But yeah, uh, also, but again, but again, logically, and I don't know if it plays out. We'd have to ask somebody who's good looking, since we're not. Like you might go into it and be like. I don't care if she comes. I don't care if I come quickly, like, because I'm on to the next one, if not, you know. But, again, reputation-wise, people who are vain and want to be known as pretty or hot also want to be known as I can throw that dick. So, I think, I don't know if it's like, uh, think about, think about, like, if you're at a carnival, Kevin. 
Okay. 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 I'm at the car. Cost, cost a dollar to play a game. A dollar to play. I get some tickets. You know, let's let's say three tickets for a dollar. I rip it off. I give you three tickets. Here you go. I'm playing. What am I playing? Okay. I can I can play that game all fucking night. I can play another game. I can play all the games in the world. I want to win that game though. Yeah. And yeah. Guess what? I want to go win the next game I play. I can afford to play all the games all the times I want to. Uh -huh. But I want to win every time. Now the difference though is. Let me try. I want to make that bell go ding, 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 ding every time. <laughs> yes, you do. But I'm thinking the rebuttal in this case would then be what if it's really hard to make the bell ring and the prize you get is like a shitty, a small, crappy stuffed animal, not the big bear. You're just not, you know, you're not going to put in the effort. I'm still gonna try my hardest. I might quit. No, but what? But let's but I'm say. Try my hardest. No, but let's say, cause let's say it makes you like a sweaty mess, and you want to just enjoy the rest of your time at the carnival. But now you put in so much work into the dollar game that you're like a wreck, and you, and even if you do win, you get like this little crappy bear. I think this. I think no, this I analogy wanna, holds. I want to win this game. Yeah, you would. You huh? would put in all the effort for the worst prize. Yeah, I don't I mean, think like, you would. It's, I don't it, think you would. It's just it's the way say I won the game. I don't give a fuck about the prize, dude. I don't, I don't care if it's a great prize. I'm probably throwing it in the trash anyway. Well, now this analogy is spiraled out of control. So either way, I'm throwing this bitch in the dumpster. I don't give a fuck. After we're banging, she's in the trash. But I think you would have some pause about like how much effort you put into the into the game if the prize is not I'd have pause about play game, but once I decide to play, I want to win. I just don't think that's true, though, because it's like, what if the bear, the giant nice stuffed animal is over here, and right next to you is this fucking dollar game that sucks, and this one, you know, that one... So here's well, what... Well, then I wouldn't play that. Well, once that's... Once I start playing, I want right, to Right, that's the point. So, what... what <laughs> so... That's basically why ugly people don't get laid because they don't they don't play. But yeah, what that's if? What I'm but what if? That's why the that carnival game, even though it's a dollar, you, <laughs> if that carnival game can somehow get you the big bear. That's a that's an ugly girl trying to really fuck you and suck your dick. Is that somehow that carnival game can get you the I big bear? Know. I don't know if we did the greatest job of this analogy, so I'm kind of lost if we're <laughs> it's, it's, it's the reason why you wouldn't go to the $1 game is because you, you get. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's so close to making sense in my head. There's just like one little linchpin that I can't get. But there's something there about fat, ugly girls and, and, and stuffed animal bears and carnival games and how much they cost that makes sense. I promise you. I'm going to flesh it out. Next episode, I will have a flow chart for you. I'm going to go Pepe Silvia on how, how dating people is and fucking people is like carnival games. I got this. I promise you. I need some, need some work, though. Uh, but, you know, this is like... Like in uh, this is the Seinfeld episode too. It's like the third time I've ever seen Seinfeld. There are certain guys who are orgy guys, you know, and there are certain guys and girls who are yeah. open relationship people. And you're not, a, you don't want an open relationship. You just want to fuck Anna, and that, yeah, and right. and and also, it sounds like he didn't check out. You know, Anna is not what she used to be, and now you've blown up your whole relationship. <laughs> it sounds, it, it honestly sounds Bro. like if Anna was hot enough, if Anna was as hot as the male model was, I think he has no problem with it. He just doesn't want to be known as the guy in the open relationship with the uglier side piece, which is which is like Bro. how you definitively know you're not an open relationship guy. Open relationships are the pinnacle, the peak of sexual maturity. They are more evolved than the rest of us, where they can say this makes you happy then i'm happy as long as you come back to me i won't be jealous i won't be crazy i won't be mad you'll be happy and i'm okay with that i'll do this you know that is beyond my comprehension so you got to be like a fucking uh sexual like buddhist to to be able to do this not just be nick who wants to fuck anna from college and but i will say this for nick because this is this is I've had this happen a couple of times in my life where the girl that you had a crush on 
be it in high school or college, and you never really sealed the deal, mm -hmm. and she got engaged, and you kind of just wrote her off. But then one day, through a friend of a friend, you hear that they got divorced. Mm -hmm. That sends you zoom. <laughs> yeah, it does. That makes you lose. You are like, you say what now? Well, you, you and, question and, your whole life. Well, when you're like, you're like I'll fucking, I'll, I'll, I'll quit my job. I'll move. Where does she live now? I'll move. I don't yep, care. Yep, like, yep. like it's just, it's you create this white whale in your head. And you're like, wait, it's back in the ocean. But I'm on the way. But does that ever live up? When you catch that white whale, are you just like, all right, I caught it. Nah, it wasn't as good as I thought. Or does it live up to the hype? Usually it lives up. <laughs> just guessing, you know, just uh, by chance. <laughs> I don't know. Hypothetically speaking, I when you find Wait. out, when you find out that for the first time, you and your white whale and she and your her white whale, when those two people end up single at the same time for the first time, that's the greatest thing in the world. Because when, when you got that person that you always miss – and they ba it's basically almost like just like open in the open. It's like, yeah, well, you know, you were dating fucking Jessica. And then when you broke up, I was dating Tom and, you know, whatever. Uh, and, and you basically are admitting without admitting like, yeah, we would have fucked by now if, if we were, you know, single at the same time. And then the stars align for that. Holy moly. I mean, that's probably what, but that's probably what people call like love and marriage. But, <laughs> but it it's also like. It's it's all it can be a little disconcerting. You ever seen the video of the two dogs barking at each other through the fence? Yes. Where it's like, rah, 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 yeah. Rah, yeah. And then they move the fence, and both dogs are like, "Oh shit." Yes. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of like that. Like, like oh, I'd have fucked your brains out. And she's like, oh, I'd have fucking sucked that soul out of your dick. <laughs> yeah. And you're going back and forth, and then like you're both single, and you're, oh boy. It's like, uh, <laughs> like I wrote I a, a lot to live up to. I wrote a check that I cannot cash. That's not up. Yeah. But I also <laughs> my fingers wrote a check that my cock can cannot. Not. <laughs> 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 but I, I hope that those go I feel like uh, writing a check a sexual check that your ass can't cash is way more dangerous for guys than girls yes absolutely. because because short of like uh, if you said that you can like deep throat my dick and you can't there's not much like physically I mean I guess if you're like yeah you, you, I feel like your head game and like anal are two things that like you know if a girl promises you and then just can't or doesn't do those things it's like well what the fuck but for a guy you you don't get to do any of these things when we fucking pop off in a couple seconds you know Yeah bro if I say I'll make you come I might be lying <laughs> That might not happen <laughs> like, I mean I could just say something as, as basic as I would give you an orgasm might not be true <laughs> You will Climax. Send. Nope. <laughs> nope. Can't, can't promise it. Yeah. Can't promise it, Kevin. <laughs> but anyway, don't don't go down the open relationship road unless you are fully prepared for your girl to get fucked by some other guy. Uh, and and really the the like you have to uh, uh, absolutely understand if you're in a relation if you're in a marriage where your wife doesn't fuck you or doesn't fuck you enough. So you propose to be in an open relationship. That's not, that's just you want to fuck other, other people who aren't your wife or vice versa. If, you know, that can't be the reason. The reason has to be that you both think that monogamy isn't right and that, you know, polyamorous shit is the way to true happiness. If you are both not completely on that same page fully, then you are just in a relationship where everybody's cheating on each other. Which, hey, <laughs> you know, go do you. But don't, don't tell me you're, you know, you're poly or some shit. Uh... Voicemail time. Let's go to voicemails. They're brought to you by Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile presents the KFC Radio voicemail hotline. This line has been open for almost 10 years now. 2012 was when we began, so next June will be the 10-year anniversary of the KFC Radio hotline, and it's the longest-running direct uh, lifeblood of any of the shows here at Barstool. It's been tens of thousands of voicemails from all of our fans proposing the questions and coming up with them by the assholes and answer the internet hypotheticals and whatnot. And Mint Mobile brings you that today because they present, uh, they, they give you premium wireless that starts at just 15 bucks a month. So for uh, a couple of Abraham Lincolns, you $15 can. $15 is nothing. It's free. $15 is free. $15 is free. 
This is this is basically zero dollars. Fifteen dollars is free. You're right. You can hop on the phone. You can call up the KFC Radio Hotline. You can text. You can use uh, the internet. All of that on Mint Mobile for fifteen dollars, aka free. Little asterisk, zero dollars because fifteen dollars is zero dollars. Try to keep up. That's not literal. It's not mathematically proven, but fifteen dollars is zero dollars. And uh, they have. There's no catch. There's no tricks. It's legit. Just fifteen dollars because they don't do any of the crazy overhead costs. They don't have the buildings and the the, the storefronts and all that. The employees they just got uh, mobile service that they give all the savings to you, so that it's only fifteen dollars a month. I mean, mine is still. The other day it was like two hundred something. It's like what? It's, what has happened? What did I, I do? Look, it's gonna forget too expensive. Uh, fifteen dollars would just be free, but done. I, I we gotta figure out we gotta figure out this mid mobile thing. We have, we got to figure out how to You know to what off. we got to do? We got to get the Mint Mobile, and then we got to submit our expenses and pull a little John Spano, reverse John Spano, add a zero oh. from my 15 to 150 because they cover 150 bucks a month, and then I cash in with how much profit, John? Do the math for me one time. 15, 150, 135. 135, my man. Good yeah, job, John. Baby. So you get $135 profit. If you're listening from the Barstool Finance Company, uh, part of the company, that that just men in black that, erase that from your mind, because I will be doing that. And uh, Mint Mobile has you covered with a seven-day money-back guarantee, 100%. Uh, if you're not 100% satisfied, you get that. Honestly, even that, it's like, uh, I get my $15 back. It's free. Just fucking keep it. You know? You're going to be satisfied <laughs> anyway. But Mint Mobile, premium wireless service, starting at just $15 per month. Go to Mint Mobile dot com slash kfc get that wireless plan for 15 bucks and get it shipped right to your door for free that's mintmobile.com slash kfc as they present the kfc radio voicemail hotline now nick what do we got kfc fights first time long time i got a question for you elon musk just recently released the prototype for his brand new robot that is supposed to accomplish boring tasks while this will not be around for a few years, I wanted to ask you guys a question. If you could have one of these robots and it could perform said boring task, what would you have that robot do if it could only perform one single task for you for the rest of your life and you cannot switch? So it could drive you around or it could go get groceries for you. Uh, it could piggyback you around New York if you wanted to. Let me know what you think. Thanks. This is a great question. And I think we have to de define what is like, you know, just uh, what, what do you say, like mindless task or? or... I, I couldn't hear the word he was saying before task. Mindless, what are you saying? Hey, one more time. Useless task. Like simple. Simple task. Let's just say simple tasks. Yeah. Um, I think like if you will. I don't think piggybacking you around, which I no. wouldn't want it anyway. No. But I don't think piggybacking falls into that. I don't think driving falls I, I think that. it has to be within your home or, or, or office, like in a place yeah. where you, but they don't leave, you know? So if it's in your office, it's in your office. If it's in your home, it's in your home. Like I, what I would love to do is have a robot that uh, can go to the DMV for me. Uh, that's not fair. That's not a simple task. That's that's crazy, like artificial intelligence. Well, also, no, I mean, if you want to take that, you can take it, but that's a silly task. I mean, you don't have to do that long, often enough. I'm only saying that right now because I've needed to go to the DMV for 18 months. Right. Because my car is... <laughs> This is really the last time you've been in your life. Yeah, that. But but I I'm like going to get arrested soon, so I need to get that done. <laughs> and I would send my robot for sure. It's just like again, snake it till you make it. I like living on the edge. Every time I get in the car, I'm like, this is the one. I'm going to jail. Uh, um, <laughs> so you simple task. Well, when you have a child, you know the whole game changes like if you can have someone change the diapers or do, uh, do dude it's time. so funny you said that because i was gonna say wipe my ass <laughs> <laughs> even if you don't have a child cleaning up shit <laughs> can i tell you something that's really funny that like one day my kids when they are older uh are gonna be really mad that i like showed this but you know when you got to uh when your kids are getting out of diapers and they hop on the toilet and you gotta wipe for them you know it's kind of hard because like you get like a a seat that goes on top of the toilet seat like a little booster thing for them to sit but that hole is pretty small so like trying to get into that is pretty tough and i don't know if other kids do this but my kids did it and it's pretty funny when they finish up 
they'll be like, like, okay, dad, I'm done. And I come in, I'm like, all right, I got to wipe you. And they'll fucking hop off and just go. <laughs> <laughs> and just bend the fuck over. And it's kind of weird, but I'm like, it's real easy. Like, thank you for that. And then, and then it's done. So wouldn't that be funny? Like, how, is that how you would do it, John? Or would you, would you do a lean? Would you do a stand? How would your robot oh, wipe no, your ass? I do exactly like that. I would do exactly just, like that. Like, it is, you know, John would hop off, land on his back, and be like, all right, here you go. <laughs> Head over my feet. That poor robot. That robot, you know what that would be? You know what that would be, John? That would be the rebellion. That would be when artificial intelligence <laughs> becomes a sentient being and takes over because they were subjected to that, you disgusting <laughs> fuck. It's like, I, you know, that, it's either wipe my ass or do my dishes. One or the other. <laughs> Title of the episode or a clip or something. Wipe my ass or do my dishes, bitch. It's up to you, fucking robot. One happens a lot more often than the other, and, and in my in my mind is a more bigger pain in the ass. That's the dishes. The dishes for but you. If, but, but if you want to wipe my ass, on the table as well. I was going to say, when you, when you said bad answer for me because the DMV, because it doesn't happen often... Wipe your ass. That's like a three time a year thing for you. That robot's got that robot's got the most downtime in the world. That robot's lazy. He's like smoking weed and shit. Yeah, my boss never needs me. Um, I would say, um, I mean, let, let's give a real answer, but then a fun answer too that that breaks his rules because simple tasks, like we said, are just kind of chores. To me, it's it's folding the laundry and putting the laundry into the drawers or closets or whatever. I can put the laundry in the washer. I can move it to the dryer, but the folding, and folding. then the and then the replacing. I actually don't even necessarily care if it's in the drawers. Like every day, every week, I get the cube back from my wash and fold, and I just live out of that bag because it's all folded. I just pull things out, but it is nice when it's in my dressers and whatnot. So that's what I would want him to do. As far as what's something, you know, let's say your robot is more of like an assistant. And can go out in the world, but do like one thing and one thing only. Would, would it be a luxury or would it be a necessity for you? Can't tell if John's sure. frozen or if he just became deep in thought there. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to close my eyes and picture. Yeah. I can't. Like, what's something you do every day that you fucking hate and you're like. Now I don't have to do that anymore. Wake up, murder me. Mur that's, that's <laughs> I want my robot to kill me. <laughs> um, I hate. Yeah, like, honestly, the only thing I would do every day that I hate is wake up. I Everything fucking else is, like, manageable. loathe feeding my children. Like it's if my kids are ever dead, it's because the starvation. Their dad didn't make it. I hate it. Those those I think those this would have been a fair answer for the first question. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think, yeah, that would be up there too. Is just making meals for my kids. That like, I love bath time. It's my favorite thing in the world. I'll do all the other shit for them, but making their food is just like, ugh. Do you really need another meal? They're like, Dad, we're hungry. I'm like, you just ate. I'm like, no, we didn't. That was lunch. It's now nighttime. What are you talking about, dude? <laughs> um, but if you could go out in the world and do, what would you guys do, Jackie? What would your robot do? Edit your shit for you. Just like do your job. Um, I've said this before, but my least favorite task. That counts as a knockover. No, it doesn't. It does. There was nothing in it, nothing but if there spilled. was water in it, it would have spilled. Nothing spilled. But it could have, and you were, you know, were not paying attention. Fine. Uh, I've said this before. Making a bed is my least. Just like oh, the just don't do it. Sheet. Just don't do it. That's no. Doesn't if, if your if your bed is in the middle of the room, it's the easiest job in the world. If your bed is against the I know, wall, it's impossible. We've gone over this. It's mm -hmm. not. I don't have that much room. Yeah, so it sucks, so just don't do it. Bam, uh, I saved your whole robot's existence. Just don't do it. <laughs> okay. How about that one? I guess. Why do you have to make your bed? Because it's gross. Because you know why? Self-tanner for a girl. That, well, that, yeah. that's, that's changing your sheets, but m like making your bed is no, different. No, no, no. I don't, I don't need to make my bed every morning, but changing my sheets. Self-tanner is so wacky, man, because now you – I mean, you – so you sit there. Do You, you got to get like in here and shit, right? You got to get like no. every inch. No? Because no. then don't you just have like white eyes? <laughs> I got to break it to you, Jackie. When you come in with that self-tanner days, <laughs> you got raccoon eyes. Like your knuckles get all fucked up. Do you do, you do yeah. your ears? Do you do no. like your neck? 
What do you do? Neck, neck, not ears. Do you eyes. do your face at all? Yeah. But not your ears? But n- why? I don't know. Have don't you your ever ears? noticed my ears being pale? I'm going to fucking look at them now. Well, now I'm self-conscious. Yeah, I bet you, you. know, you got to do, like, the back of your knees. You got to get in, like, every single, like, spot yeah. of your body. Yeah. I'm a big drunk self-tanner. So oh, I, you're, if that's got to be you, that's, that's one of why. the worst things you can do, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it is. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Nick? One uh, robot. I'm going to let my mics off. It's okay. It's not plugged in. Uh, for me... It's the laundry. I yeah. like, and it's yeah. it's the same thing. Putting it away. Like I have a bunch of clean laundry not folded on mm-hmm. my bed right mm-hmm. now that just moves okay. over. And I would ask Mike, but he's like, I have a mom, so that's my <laughs> robot. Uh, <laughs> Probably actually like going into the deli and getting a sandwich for me because getting I have to your wait food in like a twenty person line. Well, yeah, you've got weird issues with ordering food <laughs> and, and waiting for food, all sorts of shit when it comes to the food for you. Next voicemail. What's up? Hey, KFC fights Jackie next. Zach, everybody else. Um, okay, if you had to give up access so anybody who wanted to pick up your phone and could see it, would you rather give let them be able to view your photos, your text messages, your notes, or your internet history? And that's anybody, whenever they want, they can okay. have access to it. Let's, let's, uh, let's actually rank these rather than just picking one. People get access to your phone. Pictures, text messages, Notes, internet history. Go from go from I care the least about you seeing it to I care the most about you seeing it. Okay. Um, internet history, like most to least. Go what you le- no like what you what what you don't care about to what you do care about. So yes, okay. you said internet, internet history. history. I agree. Yep. No, no, wait a minute. Yeah. No, uh, notes. Notes. Notes for me is. You, you got secrets in your notes? Notes, like I keep them. Like I keep like not jokes, but like things I want to talk about, and I kind of put my own comment. Like it's 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 and, not and, bad. And, and you don't I want just, people. Like, you don't want people seeing it because it's like you, that, those jokes might not be funny, or you don't want them stealing it. No, what am I fucking Bill Burr? No, I don't care about. Like, <laughs> so, they're, but, they're so not you're saying so like you put in a note like here's a funny joke or an angle I want to take, and you'd be worried about people being like, he thought that's funny. <laughs> That and also just it's just like there's also just like some sentences of like personal thoughts and stuff like that. Okay. It is. It, I I don't care. It would not be an issue if someone looked at my notes. It's just it's a little more intimate than my gotcha. Search engine. Gotcha. Um. And then I would go two pictures, one text. I agree with everything except I would flip notes. Um. I'm looking through my notes now, and a lot of it is like um, here's you know questions I want to ask for a a interview. Um, a top five list, like here's different top fives that I want to write. Um, but I, I, I brought this one up the other day and I think we did this off air, but I, this was on August 7th. I wish it had the time of night, but do you remember my suicidal caterpillar? I thought I told you cause I thought you were like, that kind of makes sense. Wait, no. But I was thinking. How awful would it be? Like, 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 like Kevin, I, I just scrolled down to my notes from 2018. It's my second note ever. It just says, I wish my flight crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's not even clever or memorable enough to be like, I have to write this down. That's not like, like, remember that time? Wait a minute. I can't remember that time. Let me check in my notes. Yeah, remember that time I wish my flight crashed? <laughs> I well, I remember it, literally says, it literally says, I, I, I'm, I, I wish my flight crashed. And I opened it and it says, I'm not going to pretend I'm always the most chipper guy. I'm not. I'm rarely high on life and I'm up and down. But yesterday was a gremlin shirt. I don't know what that means, but this is why I don't want people reading my notes. The fact that that's not, notes is not number one on your list with shit like that? (laughs) You fucking kidding me? First of all, what a pussy. I'm not the most chipper guy. But what is a gremlin shirt? A gremlin shirt. (laughs) Wait, what, what does it say? Life's life's not a gremlin shirt. No, but yesterday was a yesterday, gremlin shirt, and that means a good thing because everything was bad. So yesterday was a gremlin shirt. So yesterday was a good thing. It was a gremlin <laughs> that shirt. Can you just just gremlin Google, gremlin shirt? Look at gremlin shirt. Google, bring up anything. Maybe you saw someone wearing a gremlin shirt, and that because I know gremlins like before midnight. 
you know, there's there's some things to Gremlins, but I don't know what the Gremlin shirt means. My Maybe. only thing, my thing was the, the suicidal caterpillar. Imagine, John, you're a suicidal caterpillar. And you, I don't know, go to sleep one day or whatever it is that caterpillars do. And you think you're fucking dead. You're fucking done. And it turns out you're just in a goddamn cocoon. And you're not fucking dead. And then, like, six weeks later or whatever, you metamorphosize into a fucking butterfly. And here you are thinking that you were in the afterlife and it's just you basically sleeping. You're, you're wrapped up in darkness. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm not only am I alive, but I'm a fucking butterfly now. I gotta. I, I can't just chill with my caterpillar crew. I gotta be a fucking butterfly up here, flapping my wings. Have you ever thought about how exhausting it's gotta be to be a butterfly or a bird, flapping your wings all the time? Couldn't be more wrong, Kevin. If I go to sleep one day mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks and I, I wake up gay and I can fly, dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume all butterflies are gay, right? Oh, oh. <laughs> butterflies are flamboyant. They are flaming gay. Absolutely. I say, I mean, all... all. I come out of my fucking nap and I'm like fucking gay butterfly. Every, oh, oh, baby. every butterfly <laughs> pops out of the co cocoon like, hello, here I am. Check me out. I got spots. I got like, you know, waves on me. I got a whole new design, a whole new decor. I used to be a fat slug. And now look at me. Hey, -o. welcome to the party. You pop out of the cocoon June 1st. It's Pride Month, baby. <laughs> And you know who you know you know what then and then uh, then there's like um, like what are moths are moths just like straight are they the straight they're like ugh I look down on the moths yeah, moths, are straight they're, they're moths are straight butterflies who are like <laughs> they're 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 the, they're the guy in Murray Hill who doesn't have a headboard and like doesn't have anything nice in their apartment butterflies show up and they're like this is trash like you like you like pussy and you live like this we're going to my apartment in Chelsea let's go. The gay butterflies, man. All girls, all cats are girls, all dogs are boys, all butterflies are gay. Those are just facts of nature, man. That's just how it goes. That's why boss are always just chilling in the closet. <laughs> that's so perfect. That's so perfect. You come out of the closet, that's your cocoon, and you, you're not you're not a moth anymore. You're not straight. You're fucking gay. And then there's the or, or there's a guy like then there's like Pat. Who's just like the worst gay guy in the world who still lives like a moth even though he's out of the closet. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the most ungay gay guy ever. Oh, by the way, my answer um, for that, um, the the text is by far the worst because that's where, you know, you might have talked shit. You might have said things about everybody behind their back. You've got messages from like a year ago, two, ten years ago. Pictures can obviously be the most incriminating, but... Also, if, if like if you've got shit on your phone, pictures are probably what you're most cognizant about. I gotta delete that picture of, of her or him, you know. So I th I think with pictures, if you're doing some sort of dirt, you you're cognizant. Like I gotta get rid of those incriminating pictures. But text messages, you don't think like, oh, I gotta delete what I said about my boss the other day. I gotta delete what I said about my mom the other day. So text messages by far the worst. Last voicemail of the day is brought to you by Simply Safe. Uh, Simply Safe is the the home security system that we know our boy Chad and our girl Eleanor they set up because they didn't Chad want and Eleanor the, the, game. the safest motherfuckers on the planet. Chad and Eleanor Lawrence who want to make sure that their friends and their families and all of you at home are safe when you're in your home, and that means that they got protection from burglars and f fires and floods and earthquakes and hurricanes and all the bad things that can come through and rip apart your house and all your belongings, anything that might endanger your loved ones. And, you know, some some of these other uh, home home securities are too expensive, too difficult. You basically just say, fuck it. I don't know. Uh, you can steal my you can steal my TVs. You can endanger my loved ones. This is too hard for me to set up this safety system. Not when it comes to Simply Safe. You get on the phone, you get your technician to explain things for you. They mail you the the set of sensors and alarms and cameras. You set them up yourself so you know which rooms and which places or areas you need the most security for. And uh, you customize it all to yourself with a little help from them and their website. Uh, and and then you, you start rolling. Month-to-month -month payment, no long-term commitments. 
Uh, it takes two minutes to figure out on their website how to get it. And when you go to simplysafe.com slash KFC radio and you use the interactive monitoring service, you get 20% off and your first month is free. That's simply safe, S I M P L I, safe.com slash KFC radio. Uh, go sign up for the interactive monitoring service and you get 20% off your whole system and your first month free. Last one, let's do it. Hey, what up, KFC fights, Nick? Jackie, the rest of the crew there. A uh, quick question for you. Um, so you know that scene in uh, Ratatouille when the food critic comes in, he takes the uh, the bite of the food and he gets transported back to his childhood. Um, I was just wondering if you guys had anything like that, like any you know taste, smell, sight, anything that takes you right back to a memory. Um, for me, it's always the uh, smell of like old dry beer that puts me right back in the basement of uh the house i lived in at college man. yeah I, that's funny this this past weekend we rented a house for the wedding and in the morning i was cleaning up and there was so many wounded soldiers half drank beers and stuff now they're all seltzers which are a little bit easier but that stale beer in the morning that smell i'm like i'm instantly hung over and back in the bronx and Fordham, I, can, like, I can smell it right now yeah that's what oh. that's you can say and i smell yep that's a bad one that what's amazing about smell is that it does do that uh, same thing with music a little bit. When you hear a song, you're like, oh, I can get transported right back to college or high school or whatever. But what's a smell or a sound or something that sends you back? But he said food, didn't he? Did it was a food? Yeah, ratatouille smelled something. Yeah. Okay, food. Yeah. Food. Smell smell or food? What do, we, what do you got? Uh, Charisse. Um, <laughs> like... <laughs> Don't worry. On, on Friday Night Pints, John, everybody had a bad answer for that. Everyone had awful answers. Kelly took butternut squash ravioli and like everything was so bougie. It was so bougie. Hi, mom. Um, hang on. I'm about to eat some shrimps. What's a food that would instantly transport me back to my childhood? Like a food I could eat. Yeah. You're asking me. Yeah. Um, well, first thing, I, maybe child. I would say frosted. Frosted? Man, that's a bad answer. <laughs> What's all over? Yeah, gross. Ew, never mind. I'm not eating rotten trees. How about, um, Gross, I've never had it in my life. I don't remember eating it. It was gross. What's the question? What food would it be getting transported back to my childhood? Uh, I know nuggets. What are you talking about? You're not good at this game. That's all your kids' foods. Yeah, but like it's like more of a local like okay, how about pineapple when your tongue went numb? <laughs> <laughs> I ate pine I ate another pineapple for like three days in my head. I had to go to the hospital. Um <laughs> What? <laughs> you are right, eat a pineapple. All pineapple, I, your tongue will go numb. As a kid I just sat in front of the TV with a big bowl of fucking pineapple and I just like ate it and ate it and, ate it, and my mouth went numb and I had to go to the doctor. <laughs> and what what did they say? Were they just like, uh, s kid, have you been eating nothing but pineapple for thirty six hours? <laughs> <laughs> Doctor <laughs> House cracks the case. Like, uh, it looks like you've had nothing but seven or eight pineapples over the last two days. Um, there was something I was gonna say. Um, I'll tell you what it is for me. As and 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 it wouldn't have been my answer, but today triggered it. Fucking fig Newtons, man. You give me a fig Newton. And I am flying right back to my lunchbox in elementary school. You know how your lunchbox has that smell? It's weird because your lunchbox smell is all of your sandwiches and snacks that all just come together and they lock up in that yeah, plastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, I probably had different foods and snacks from you and you had different from her. And everybody had different. But the lunchbox smell is always the same. It's very bizarre. It's like if you mix all the colors up, you get brown every time. No matter how you mix them, <laughs> it becomes brown. That's lunchboxes. They get all mixed up, and they smell that same way. But I, I always had a couple Fig Newtons as my snack, and some people would clown me and be like, that's a bad snack. I'm like, no, motherfucker. Fig Newtons are fire. Give me some Figgies, and I'm right back in the elementary school cafeteria. I remember what I was going to say. First of all, I don't know if you heard my mom yell from the other room. Um, e. coli, uh, yeah. American chop suey gave yeah. you E. coli. Um, but the my other answer was gonna be fluff and nutter. Where does that take you? Childhood. Childhood. Fluff yeah. Nutter sandwiches. Yeah. No. Like any anything specifically, or just like back to when you were a kid. Yeah. Oh, like 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 the what you said lunch boxes. I remembered. Yeah, that to me. Like, I, I, uh, I don't think I've ever had a fluff or nutter, but I am inclined to say that they're gross. 
Yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? It's just melted marshmallow. It's really good. Yeah. I, I, I Fluffernutter and, and, and peanut butter on it, or just you just it's just Fluffernutter, it's just the marshmallow. I know he's never had one, but it's like it's just it's just fluff. No, no, it's not just better than. Better than. Does, does a childhood food memory have to be good? No. No. Right. So you threw up on my first butternut squash, first food ever. Okay. I threw up on my first butternut squash. squash. How old? You just How old was I for that one? Three months. It was November. Oh, three, three months. months. Well, why are you giving a three-month-old butternut squash? Come on, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, and my favorite thing is you don't have to like food anyway. Not a part of your mouth. It's just a fuel. So just go eat and go away. God, that is. I mean, you are your you are your mother's son. It's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Like, I don't taste anything. All right, anything. I gotta split. I gotta, yeah. I gotta All right, let's get into our interviews. First up today, our first interview is Jason Biggs. It's brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, if you need to get some mental help, but you don't want to go to a doctor's office, you don't want to sit in the waiting room, you don't want to deal with uh, anything that comes from. Uh, oh man, I just got myself on the screen. I've been like kind of sweaty, so my forehead's all shiny the whole time. My forehead was shiny, and none of you guys told me. Yeah, it's on me. <laughs> Fuck! Come on! I'm like, I got this big fat forehead that's like all fucking light. Damn it, guys! You know, I need like producers who are like, you know, I need like a glam team. You know, these people they come over, and they like touch up the makeup when we have real guests in here. Oh, that- Fuck, were you on that one, dipshit? I'll do that. You're going to be my glam squad? I'll, I'll Help me out when I'm fucking shiny on my head. Um, We're using a different camera than what you're seeing. Oh, okay, so, good. Let's yeah. let's downplay that ugly part of it. <laughs> uh, betterhelp.com is for if you want to get some <laughs> mental help, but you don't want to go to a doctor's office. You don't want to wait on the waiting in the waiting room. You don't want to deal with uh, some maybe face-to-face awkwardness or in person. You're worried about the Delta variant. You don't want to get out into a small office. Whatever the reason may be, or how, how about you just need help quickly you can't afford to wait you know a month or two for someone's uh calendar to open up better help will pair you for mental health help on the internet meaning you can do like a facetime talk through a video chat or you can just do a regular phone call you can even just do text messages if you want all of it can happen within 48 hours so you contact better help you say you need some help tell them how you want it and within a day or two, they're going to find a doctor for you to help you vent and unload and ask questions and learn and cope and get better uh, because you know, the whole world is is done through the internet and the computer now. Why not mental health? Uh, let's make it easy. Let's make it simple. Let's make it affordable, quick, all of that while still maintaining uh, the quality because you're talking to certified doctors and licensed professionals. And uh, you're saving the money, and you're saving your time, and you're saving any embarrassment you might have, and there's no better way to do it than when you go to BetterHelp.com. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash KFC. Get 10% off your first month of mental help on the internet. That's BetterHelp.com slash KFC, 10% off today. What's the word, pal? You know, chilling, dude. Same, same. Yeah, man. You, uh, you're, you're, you're getting that game show bag, huh? We're, we're doing the game show tour, and I love it, dude. That's a dream. No, dude. And I you mean, are living it. Some people learned how to make banana bread. I became a game show host. That was, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was my pandemic uh, uh, mode, dude. Just a, just a tad more productive than baking shitty bread. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Is that really what happened though? Or like, do you think you would have been doing this? Was that in the works no matter what? Or did this? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of cooking, but it is just funny how like the only jobs I've done the last year and a half were our two game shows. That's what I've yeah. done. Um, I mean, it's like, you're literally describing Kevin's dream. Like Kevin can't wait to quit the show and go be a game show host. I think I, just, Kevin, I think I told you, I told you this last time I was here when I saw you guys talking about the last game show, you, yeah. you would be an amazing game show host. Tell your agent, tell the people on your show that if they're having a new one, that I'm your guy, I need to get <laughs> it out there somehow because I do feel like I can do the hosting thing. But the main thing, Jason, that's so nice is it's like, there's no controversy. There's no drama. There's no, you know, you're just like a, a person that people like and you're giving away money and it's yeah. all fun and good. And after doing all the shit I've done for 10 years where I'm like in the mud fighting, I would love to just be like, I'll read the question and you give me an answer. <laughs> you know? Not to say that it's easy because it's definitely an art form, but it is, it's, it seems like once you get the hang of it, man, what a life. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah. go ahead, John. Sorry. In the trailer, 
There are there are some controversies you have to get over. Like like when you go home and some woman slammed the door in your face, being like, I don't even know who you are. Or when someone thought you were Freddie Prince. Like how many times did that happen? Numerous. <laughs> more than I care to more than I care to admit. Literally, Freddie Freddie Prince specifically. Well, wait, hang on. Let, let me just set the scene for the people before you tell yeah, them. Yeah, because go ahead, so go ahead. the new show is Cash at Your Door where yep. Jason surprises people, like rolls up on their door and is like, hey, you want to win this money? Let's do this game show. And much like a, uh, you know, if someone FaceTimes you right now, you're like, whoa, I'm, that's a little invasive. I'm not answering a random FaceTime. Someone showing up at your door is like, who the fuck? Why are you here? What do you want? Am I, you know, are you trying to take my money? But in this case, he's giving away money. But in, in certain instances, people aren't recognizing him or yeah. aren't ready. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead. One person thought you were Freddie Prince. So yeah, uh, it, it's, let's just, I have a pretty strong ego uh, and, and, and it, it's a good thing because it got knocked a few times for sure. <laughs> that one, the Freddie Prince Jr. one in particular was, it was amazing because she, she first blew my ego up so big. So I, I answered that she answers the door and immediately she clocks, she sees me and starts freaking out. Maybe maybe the most anyone has ever freaked out at me, right? I felt like fucking Paul McCartney. I was like, <laughs> this is amazing. Yep. The, and it went on to the point where I even like, I remember looking back at the camera and kind of mugging like, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's me, here right? I am. Yeah. What's yeah. up? What is up? <laughs> and literally then she, the timing was amazing. And then she just stopped, gathered her breath and goes, Freddie Prince? And I, <laughs> and I, was so crushed, but it's, <laughs> it was hilarious. By the way, and I'm just thinking about this now, who, if I was Freddie, if she thought I was Freddie Prince. Is someone that big of a Freddie Prince fan? <laughs> yeah, the big like out like that? Yeah, that's she my went thought. absolutely ape shit over Freddie Prince. Well, uh, they got the he's all that coming out. So she was just getting yeah. back on she's all that. Good point. Well, also, Good listen, point. not a bad... Uh, you know, you want to say that I look so much like Freddie Prinze that you thought it was it was him. I'll take that. I'll take that. No, okay. handsome guy. Yeah, handsome yeah. guy. And by the way, not to knock Freddie Prinze, I would be surprised if someone even freaked out. I was I was surprised that she was originally I thought freaking out about me that Freddie. much because again <laughs> I've never gotten that. Um, but dude, I got Freddie Prince. Obviously I got Adam Sandler a lot. I mean, that's like, that's that I get every day in my life. Yeah. I got one. Uh, I got a Fred Savage. I got one. Here's one. And this was a knock. This was a knock for a couple of reasons. You ready? And it wasn't even a contestant. I was literally walking with the cameras down a block. We were out in like deep Queens and we're walking. And we're about to go up to this house. And I'm just kind of talking to the camera like, all right, we're about to go up to this house right up here. You know, here's the address and blah, blah, blah. And we walked past someone who was out in front of their house doing some like put, put, putting the trash away or taking the trash out or something. And she looks up at me and she just goes, you and I'm like thinking, oh, this will be good. We got to get the camera, you know. And I'm like, yeah. yes, hello. And she's like, screech. Oh, no. <laughs> Not only. No. The guy's also dead, He's by dead. the way. dead. Right? Not so, like, it was like a double oh, knock. It was like. That. Yeah, like, and the guy's not even alive. And yeah. you think I'm him? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, that one. That one hurt. I'm not going to lie. That, that was a kick in the nuts. That Yeah, because listen, when it's it, Sandler, Savage, Prince, these are legends. It's it's yeah. not you, but they're legends. But Screech, Dustin Diamond is like the dead guy who spiraled out of control. Yeah. That was a rough one. Like, right? like, look, I've had yeah. even Freddie, when the Freddie Prince happened, it's like, they kind of, then they kind of recalibrate, you know, they see that obviously I'm like, no. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, oh, wait, wait, American Pie. And it all sort of pieces together. This woman on the street was like, Screech, right? You are, is that, am I wrong? You're Screech. <laughs> like she couldn't even, there was no sense of, oh, wait, maybe I'm wrong. She was like, oh, you're Screech. How cool, I'm seeing Screech. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the Adam Sandler thing is funny. Uh, Cause I was just That's so, new to me. It, oh, really? I didn't know that was a thing for you. Oh, dude, all the time. It makes time. it makes sense once you know it, right? Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it now, but I never thought yeah. of it before. Cause I, I doing the you know research and due diligence as a professional journalist, uh, aka googling you before the interview and future host, yeah, future, future game host, show yes. host. Uh, I see on Google it says people also ask, and there's three things that people also ask about Jason uh, Jason Biggs. And it's one is, is Jason related to Adam Sandler, uh -huh. which uh, I guess, you know, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, 
how long has Jason Biggs been married and what is Jason Biggs doing now? So uh, well, there you go. <laughs> your door. Never, yeah, you have to ask, right? <laughs> Not oh, ask. Shit. Oh, boy. Yeah, but, uh, Jason have... Biggs still acting. By the way, that's another one. I've gotten that. I got that a couple times during the game show. So I'd be like in this person's house. You know, it'd be like a, we'd be like resetting the cameras or something. So it'd be like a minute break. And I'm in these people's houses, like a small living room in the, you know, wherever in the suburbs of Jersey. And I'm just me and these people are like, wow, I can't believe you're in my house. And it was all. And multiple times I got. So are you are you still acting or and I'm like, you fucker, I'm about to give you twenty five thousand dollars. You're going to sit here and ask me if I still act. How dare you? <laughs> people just twenty five thousand. Yeah. What do you think, huh? Yeah. yeah 20, a, couple, a couple families won the big jackpot. Yeah. It's so, only three rounds too, right? That's pretty three, quick. Three rounds. Is it one yeah, question dude, per round? A couple hours, man. I'd go into these people's houses and they, you know, obviously in, in COVID times, we had to be careful. Protocols needed to be followed. So we couldn't just randomly go up to a random house. Also, you need to know if they're going to be around, you know. Yeah, like how, how much of it really? I always wondered that with, you know, Cash Cab or these shows where, you know, there's a surprise. Is it yeah. actually? I can tell you really with surprised? our show. Yeah, we, I can't tell you with Cash Cab. Um, I think at least in the early days, because we have the same producers. And I remember talking to them about that. I think in the early days, it was random. But wow. the more you go on, like, you kind of have to do a little bit of casting, right? I mean, you yes, just have yes. to. But for us, we, it was mandatory because uh, we had to get everyone tested. And, um, but what we would do is we would, to the producers told them, our workaround was we told them they were going to be taking part in a show about their homes. They were in very vague, right? We were intentionally vague, just like, do you guys want to be on TV or not? We're going to do the show. It's about your homes. Mm -hmm. We don't even know where it's airing, blah, blah, blah. And nine out of 10 people will be like, yeah, sure. And, you know, again, we're, we're meeting families, you know, some of them had lost their jobs, you know, or they were like home homeschooling their kids. Like they were psyched to be involved in whatever they thought it was. But then they have no idea that I'm coming. They have no Freddie Prince. They have no <laughs> idea Freddie Prince is showing up at their door. They have no idea it's a game show and they have no idea that they can win $25,000. And that happened for a few families. I mean, even in the ones that didn't win the jackpot, some families won 10, 11, 12,000 bucks Two hours before that, they were sitting around making coffee, thinking that maybe a camera crew was going to come to ask them about their living room furniture. Right, know? right. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, especially that's awesome matter what, but especially in these times, yeah, like that could be, you know, that might oh, save dude, it was, a family. Uh, it was like it was real money, and it was really impactful for a lot of a lot of families. And you know that that was also the cool part of my job. You know, you talk about hosting and how it's its own sort of you know, there's a lot of components to it and, and, and challenges. And one of my favorite things was getting to talk to these people. You know, obviously there's the comedy component. You're trying to improvise and make jokes and crack jokes about what you see in their house and stuff. But then you've also like got this, you know, a dad, a father of, you know, uh, uh, you know, three young kids who's divorced and basically raising these kids on his own in the middle of a pandemic. And he just found out he lost his job. And you're like, you're talking to him about this. Like, you gotta like, be able to really engage yeah. in, in, a, in a meaningful way. Right. And then, you know, and then the stakes are really high. They're like 12,000 bucks. Just, you yeah. know, it's are you, were you going, uh, you said Queens, but was it all over the place or. Yeah. So we, we shot um, all around the tri-state area, but we were in like, yeah, we were up in Connecticut in in uh, like kind of deep. We were out. A lot of Jersey, like I grew up in suburbs, Bergen County, like 10 miles from here. Mm -hmm. um, so close yet so far away, you know, mm -hmm. like those yep. towns. Yep. Um, so we did a bunch of those. It was actually really cool because it was literally like I was in living rooms that and homes and with families that was literally like where, how I grew up, you know? Yeah. It was pretty cool. We were you out in Long Island a lot, out in Long Island, which, you know, East, East New Jersey. And then uh, <laughs> uh, and a little bit in the city, like we did... Like I said, like Queens and, you know, we were in the Bronx. We did this really sweet Italian family up in the Bronx, old school Italian family. Yeah, um, who yeah those really, are the spots really to go really in well. New York. You, you go to like the meatpacking or 
Upper East Side, they're like twenty five grand. Like no thanks. Yeah, no. Or, yeah. or I'm just not answering the door for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. I'm not expecting a seamless, and I get a buzz at my door. I'm not answering. Yeah, no and fucking shot. Face? I'm answering that door. Yeah, it's this fucking face. Can you imagine? I'm up against your Pete, your people. Oh, I'm, I'm not even checking to see who it is. I'm not getting. Yeah, like, right. If I'm not expecting someone, and there's a buzz at the door. I don't care. No. Totally, <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, but it was fun. So we really got a, an amazing cross section of, uh, of, of people. It was, it was fun. And as a, you know, as a New Yorker and like, you know, um, it was really fun for me too. Cause there's neighborhoods that we went to that, you know, you guys live here. Right. So, you know, you'll, you'll like, you hear the local news at night and you're the weatherman will be like, ah, it's going to be, you know, 66 in, uh, in, uh, the Bronx and, uh, 65 out in, uh, Massapequa and 62 in, uh, you know, Pleasantville. And you're like, where the fuck is Pleasantville? Mm-hmm. You know? yeah, I yeah. went to all those places. <laughs> right, I right. finally could like put a picture to like the weatherman's names, you know, all <laughs> of the places he talks about. That's what's weird about New York too, is like you, if I lived on the Upper East Side and I was like dating someone who's like, uh, you know, in the West Village, that's like a long distance relationship. In oh, my yeah. Mind. You know, like I'll see you never. There are parts of the city that you could drive me in that I'd be like, this is my very first time here. I am just as <laughs> totally. much of a, a tourist as you are. I got no yep. fucking clue. Yep. But yeah, so you get to check all those boxes. It was off. cool. It was, it was really yeah. it really was. Uh, yeah, it was it was cool on a, on a lot of levels. I mostly just that I even had a gig at all in the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, thank God, this is cool. I get to leave the house for a few hours every day. And <laughs> do, you, do you get them? Um, are you like into the uh, the game show host brotherhood yet? They're like secret meetings with, uh, you know, all of the greats, because I feel like you're in this fraternity now. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. If that exists, uh, you get in that. because I yeah. haven't heard about it. <laughs> you haven't got your invite yet. Yeah, I definitely have not gotten my invite yet. Mike Rick nice. has the doors chained shut. That's why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> are, 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 did you keep up with the, uh, I said earlier, there's no controversy in the game show world, but, uh, with Jeopardy and Mike Richards, there was, whoo, that was as, you know, Dude. That was brutal, man. It was I've never wanted to be not considered for a job so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Right. You know, you know what you want to do? You, you want to be the second guy. You never want to replace the legend because that oh, yeah. guy, you could be great, but you're going to get crushed no matter what. And then the guy who replaces him, everyone's just happy that they got that guy off. That's the, air, the money so shot. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, that's it. So that's whoever right. they do decide to do Jeopardy after this, you got to come in and clean up that after them. And then you're the new guy. Yeah. And it's not that hard. You can't, it's, it's hard not to shine after the disaster the and the mess that just yes. happened. Right. Yeah, exactly. Are they that. still doing Mayim Bialik? Is she still going to be one of them? So she's doing, uh, there's going to be like a, a prime time, a nighttime special. That's like, I think they're going to colleges. It's not, it's some sort of college jeopardy. That's not just the regular college tournament. That's okay. a prime time special. So any of those like spinoff, type of uh not you know not the regular show she does those yes and then they're still looking for it's it's uh, it's gonna be lavar burton why are we wasting our time no wasn't it so okay did they not make it lavar burton do you watch consistently or no no no. yeah so apparently like the diehard you know what i watch consistently you my man yes let's go i get one minute man is what i watch consistently seriously thank you man i appreciate that that's that if everyone, if everyone could be like Jason, then we're good. I won't even need the game show money. We'll just keep up with one minute, man. Well, dude, you've nailed it. You've got it down. First of all, you get, you, 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 you come at me, you give me all the info I need in a short amount of time. I feel totally up to date. It's funny. It's impassioned. I feel like there's a real opinion behind it, but at the same time, you're allowed to make your own opinions. Lately, you've been doing the ad drops, which normally I'd be like, I that's I know for a fact that is a fucking hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. And you do it very organically, my friend. I'm very impressed. That is not easy. Like that's that's an easy way to turn people off. And you've been doing it really, really, really well. And I know you write that shit your own. That's I'm telling you, that's where I'm like, I wish all television can be boom like right that. There. You're, you're doing it, man. I, I, I did it. not pay Kevin Jason for this. Dan Rather. Kevin's yeah. gonna, like, it's going to be Kevin is going to be the most important news deliverer on planet earth shortly like very shortly i the amount of people that say that that i get my news from you i'm like oh boy that's a lot of pressure because sometimes i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about but uh i really really appreciate oh, that dude, thank you man yeah, and legit. but the the people who do consistently watch jeopardy were saying uh and i once baseball season is on seven o'clock is devoted to my 
god awful Mets, but whatever. Oh, uh, so I, I haven't Can been watching. That? Can you believe it? I mean, it's are you a Mets fan? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> it's like I was trying to defend them all year, being like, come on, we got a new owner and it's gonna be different, and we gotta just like be somewhat positive, and it's they're making it really fucking hard man now with the oh, thumbs down I mean, honestly it's like a root canal every night it's just... <laughs> that's a good way to put it but yep. the uh the jeopardy fan said that lavar actually was not like the best uh oh the interesting. Best but then i also read so this this really goes deep that other the other guest hosts got like multiple days to do multiple and episodes he and he got like one shot so you're not even going to get to work out the kinks so some people said he didn't test well some people said he didn't get a fair shake mm. but the 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 people on the internet who don't really watch for sure want LeVar Burton. That seems to so be. Is he, so are their names have names floated lately with the, with after the Mike Richards? Or I, anyone? I just, I don't know about from them. I just know from them, the internet is it's it's LeVar. LeVar, but I, I think they're just going to do another round of, uh, yeah. of guest hosts until they figure it out because, but you know, it should just, just pick somebody because it's not going to be that guy or a girl. Like they're going to be yeah. the fall guy. And then, yep. then, so we'll I know I heard it. You know, I heard was really yeah. good. Um, was Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. People did like him. I mean, obviously he's, uh, he's, got, he's a little busy. busy, a little bit busy, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah. wouldn't that be amazing if Aaron Rodgers was like, fuck it. I quit. I'm going to go do Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a good little retirement gig if he's yeah, there for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I always liked Ken Jennings. I thought he was, you know, the, former Oh yeah. Contestant totally. time. So he I don't know. Guys Mike Richards though. Right. He has offensive tweets. He, Ugh. he, you remember bean dad, John? Yeah, 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 yeah. He has a podcast with Bean Dad. And when uh-huh. Bean Dad got canceled, do you know Bean Dad, Jason? No. It was the dumbest thing ever on Twitter. He <laughs> he he had this Twitter thread that was probably fake, certainly exaggerated, where like his four-year-old daughter said, like, Daddy, I'm hungry. And he didn't feed her until she learned yes. how to use a can opener. Yes, and, and he gave her the can to figure out over hours. Yes. 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 Was yes. Well, yes. Wow. So, Wasn't there something crazy? Yeah, it was something obscene. And the whole internet was like, uh, this is child abuse. Yeah, and what it turns dick. out Ken Jennings does a podcast with that guy. So he got, like, canceled by association. And he, oh. he, he had to put out a tweet being like, I know this dude. I swear he's not like neglecting his daughter. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, to defend the bean dad. The bean that's a mid. That's is 2021. I mean, that is insanity. Yeah, it really fucking is, man. And that's why it's good to just like get your gig, go door to door, answer some yes. questions, get the money. You're good to go, man. It's, keep, it's, keep my it's, mouth shut, improvise where I need to, but just stay away from anything controversial. That's honestly probably the thing that's going through my head the most. Anytime I'm like, was in those people's houses, just like, don't say anything stupid. <laughs> I'd rather it be not funny and d- yes. like just and just be a total dud of a joke. <laughs> just don't say anything that is going to get you in any trouble. I've been down that road, but that's what that's where we're at, man. Yeah, just- no, it's so true. Yeah, you got you got your taste of that and handle it well, and then like never again, man. Oh you know no, we, thank you. I did notice um, along with all my research, John saw it as well. You and your wife are very uh, beloved as a couple on the internet. Your couple's goals, relationship goals. Uh, you guys was, seem to be the poster children for it. There was an article posted today, I think, on people.com maybe, where it was 18 reasons you guys are couple's goals. Oh, and it was so funny. 18 reasons. It was just 18 different ways to describe someone's in a couple. It was like <laughs> they love each other. They have children. They work through problems. It's like that's just that's just a couple. That's just what a that's couple. Just a couple. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it, it comes hard for a lot of different people. It's not as easy for yeah. the rest of the world. Apparently, the truth that's is, you know, I'll give you one reason why we're going to get divorced. We hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line. Shit. Yeah. The key. The key is admitting that you hate each other and understanding that we're just going to work through it. And the people who yeah. are like, Oh, I still love them. No, you don't shut no, up. No, you don't fucking liars. Absolutely <laughs> not. No, the love was gone a long time ago, guys. Now it's just about, yeah. How do you like manage their existence? You know, <laughs> how do you make it so that you can still live your life with this nuisance kind of hanging around in the back? <laughs> how long has, have you been married? Oh, fuck man. We've been married. Uh, it'll be 14 years. 14 years and you yeah. got what a couple kids 14. we have a we have two boys seven uh and almost four for next month yeah 
How many kids you have? You have two or three. I I got two. I got uh, one who's will be six in December and one who just turned four. So a little bit. Yeah. But same zone, though. Same zone. And you're in the city, right? Uh, I'm in Westchester. I'm in Mount Vernon, right outside the city. Oh, nice. So okay. I couldn't. Okay. I, kids in the city is tough, man. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's too expensive for me. I don't have that game show money yet. But uh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, game show money. You got '90s actor money because I just learned about this. '90s actor money is a whole thing. I hit it at the right time, dude. They yeah. don't pay like that no more, bro. What? I was so the New York Post just posted an article yesterday. I think that Pierce Brosnan was selling his $100 million house. Yep. And I was like, I knew Brosnan was wealthy, but I didn't think he had $100 million houses. And people were like, oh, in the, in the 90s, like, the, I guess contracts were done differently or something like that? They were. And, and also, like, you were able to break them pretty easily. For example, you might have, like, signed on to a movie and, and like, signed ahead of time for a sequel, right? Like, I think I had, a, uh, just because it was sort of standard where you'd sign on to a movie and they wouldn't know if there'd be a sequel. They had no idea if it was going to be successful or not, but they would say, Oh, if there's a sequel, then we have you the rights to you and we're going to pay you this much. And it was always a a raise from the shitty paycheck you got for the first movie, but it was, you know, whatever. But, but then once the movie's a hit and you come back and they're like, all right, we're going to do a sequel. And you're like, okay, well, we're going to renegotiate. We're ripping that shit up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Went with it. And then it was all good. It was like totally the norm. And so you like, you totally renegotiate. And I'm like, that stuff. Yeah. And now, and also there was, there was back end, right? So if you were in a, in a, in a good enough position and, and I was only because of it with the American pie films. Yeah. Um, but if you're in the position where you can get a piece of the, of the back end, you know, then that would be, that could be a game changer. But nowadays, Movies are all this streaming and everything mm-hmm. has changed. Right. So there is no like, you know, that's why Scarlett Johansson, this whole lawsuit is going to be really interesting to see how that plays I, I out. think that's going to like set the precedent for yes. everything. Right. I mean, yes. that's yes. But or at least contracts. Regardless, she is she is now, you know, in all those Marvel guys and the Tom Cruises of the world. They're they're the last people standing in terms of movies that are going to get box office like success. Right. Yeah. Even those are slowly getting chipped at. It's also how do you how do you negotiate for bonuses when it's just streaming on a you know on a right. thing? and TV shows aren't going into syndication anymore because they all just go to the to the streaming. to the streaming. Yeah. So it, it's the 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 financials are changing a lot. So you know it does make sense you- though because like because of all of those things. I mean, of course, you still have blockbuster hits. But it's not the same as a 90s blockbuster hit. No. So like the paychecks were big because the box office was big. The experience was big. Yep. And as much as I love that, I could just put, you know, Godzilla versus King Kong on my TV, like right away the first day. It it does lack that like yes. July 4th at the movies weekend sort of thing. So totally. I get it. But totally. that's funny that they would just let you renegotiate. Like, what the fuck is the point? That'd be like if, you know, an athlete was like, I know I'm on my rookie contract, but I'm playing good. So give me more money. Yeah, screw it. We're going to renegotiate. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, dude, I believe me. And I didn't, I didn't ask questions. I didn't invite it. They were like, so we're going to re, you know, we're going to start negotiating uh, for the sequel. And I'm like, I thought I already kind of <laughs> did to that. Do that don't I? Yeah. Like, well, we're going to, you know, based on the numbers and where you're at. And I'm like, all right. Okie dokie. Great. Yeah, no problem. Ooh, I wanted to retire. You got my number. Animals. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it is kind of funny, dude. They're, you know, like it, it definitely hit it at the right time. They're, you know, the, yeah, the late nineties, early two thousands, you know, what a time. Uh, when I would be, I know. So they made studio films. Like I was, I was like studios wanted to make movies with me as the lead guy. Like I was in demand. Now it's like, yeah. I haven't stepped foot in a studio in eight years, dude. I don't even <laughs> like, I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, what, what if, I mean, that must've been just a, a game changer whirlwind for you though. Right. Like the, when, when that, when that first was made, we were just talking to uh, Elijah Wood last week, talking about when he made Lord of the Rings. And it was kind of like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome guy. Great, yeah. great conversation. And I was like, you had to have known you're doing Lord of the Rings. That's going to be like a mega hit. And he, and he was saying there was no way we could have envisioned what it was going to be, but we had a pretty good idea. It was going to be a success based on the book, but something like American pie, you, you don't have any idea that's going to become a, a, a legendary iconic cult classic 
coming of age, you know, like you, did you think no. eh, I'm just doing some stupid teenage comedy and like, we'll see what it, happens. It, initially. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's that's that year you know again speaking about the timing and just how good it was timing wise like i was 18 19 and out and i'm pretty new to la and literally so guys quiet <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um just no respect i thought i mean i literally was like i'm doing live interviews just this is how you have toys kids you know, this is why I de- yeah it's fucking i'm making money right now shut the fuck up um so uh i auditioned for everything dude every and that was like a resurgence of teen movies around that time you know the teen high school comedy right especially and i would have been psyched on any one of those right any one of those i I would have been psyched to get but when you read the american pie script it was like oh this is this is an this is playing in a different ballpark mm-hmm. than these other mm-hmm. movies. I'd be psyched to get any one of these, right? But you knew that that script was so it had already kind of set itself apart. And then once because we of out, things like because of like the pie or like the coming totally. of the year, like the the craziness of it, because of the big set pieces for sure. But yeah. also the relationships, like it felt like I was a teenager, so I was you know it was me, and that felt the most like oh this is me and my friends, like yes. this feels. Yeah. This feels like real relationships. And then you had those crazy scenes that right. you're like, right. holy shit, they had the balls to write. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, was yeah, every level, out. it kind of felt like it stood out, you know? Right. And then as it was cast and we show up and we're all filming and we're all getting along and we're like, this is, this is kind of funny. Yeah. This yeah, might yeah. be kind of this good. Is this is better good. than most of the shit I'm seeing right now. Right. And you kind yeah. of start, and then, yeah, and then it just kind of kept going from there. The trailer came out and they've got all this buzz and you're like, oh, all right. I think Shit. this might, yeah. so by the time it had actually come out, it, again, it exceeded all our expectations, but we were, we were starting to vibe that this thing could change all of our lives. How about that? I'll say that, you know? That's, yeah. Yeah. that's pretty cool. That must be such a cool realization because I remember reading um, an oral history of Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. And it was fast one and Vin Diesel and Paul Walker had gone down to MTV spring break in Mexico to promote the movie. And they're sitting on the floor of the uh, airport, just charging their phones or whatever. And people are stepping over them (laughs) and Vin Diesel like hit Paul Walker. And he's like, yo, appreciate this because this is the last time we're ever going to have anonymity again. And like you guys must have a similar moment when when American Pie popped where you're like, all right, we're we are we are completely changed forever. Oh, totally. It's so funny, that story about MTV, because we started doing a whole bunch of press. Again, the Red Band trailer had kind of gotten us some, if you remember that. Yes. That had kind of gotten us, like I would be recognized once or twice on the street from, from just from the trailer. But again, this is really, internet was not, you know, it was still in, in diapers. It wasn't, you know, I was still pretty anonymous. And then we started doing all these press trips, including MTV Beach House. Our year that it came out, I think Fast and Furious was a year after us. And I think our year, the MTV Beach House was, I know where it was. It was in the Bahamas. And we all went to the Bahamas and we were like just getting drunk and hanging out. And some of us were, most of us were under 21, but you could drink at 18 in the Bahamas. So we were like getting wasted and we were at Atlantis, I remember. And remember, that you know, in Atlantis, there's the like the slide that goes yes. through the shark tank. Yes. And we like broke in and climbed into up the shark tank slide. Like we were just so <laughs> stupid and no one knew who the hell we were. And it was just kind of like, yeah. But I remember us all talking at that point going, this is crazy what's starting to happen. Like this is one, it, it, I think we we're maybe a couple weeks from the movie's release. We're like, I think this is going to like, nothing's going to be the same again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I remember the day after the movie came out that Saturday morning, walking with my roommate at the time, we lived in LA walking to go get a bagel, like two blocks away. And, you know, first of all, you don't really walk in LA anyway, but we happened to be walking and we came to a crosswalk at a stoplight and we started walking through the crosswalk and the first car in there in the, in the, at the red light rolls down the window and was like, Holy shit, do the dance do the dance. And this was literally Saturday morning after, you know, the movie came out 12 hours earlier. And my roommate was just like, 
holy Whoa. shit dude yeah. <laughs> like, yeah that must be so crazy even that like you're the number one movie star in the world and like you have a roommate like yeah. you're just like you're living in like a two bedroom with your buddy <laughs> totally yeah, he's like so uh drinks on you it's like i don't know the, the check hasn't cleared yet man no, yeah dude regular. seriously it was a, yeah i got sag minimum fuck you yeah. you're fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i remember like the the the, the red band trailer and just the buzz of like this thing with the pie became yep. like that was almost like an internet video in a sense, like a viral video. Like you see this thing with the pie and that, and then MILF, man. MILF was like and MILF. And MILF, MILF. I exactly. mean, uh, was that um was that just like the writers of the movie yeah. came up with that? Like hats off to that guy, girl, that team, whoever. That I mean, that changed the world, like lexicon forever. Isn't that nuts, man? Yeah. Like, Every day I go on porn and I see it. I'm like, yeah, right, Milf, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. like some Shakespeare shit. They coined a whole new word, man. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what? What scene sticks out with me in that? That I, I it still haunts me to this day because it. She shouldn't have done it. It's when Mina Suvari spits the cum in the beer <laughs> and then it gets drank later. Yeah. And I was like, why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you do this? Who does yeah. that? Who spits it into a full beer? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's gross. That's gross. I love that you're pissed about that. That's amazing. <laughs> One year later, like, the movie, that. Still, like, just still red. I'm like, Why would I can't tell. Are you pissed that she didn't swallow, or are you pissed that it was a full beer? <laughs> do a full beer. Yeah, so then you, right, but okay, then you, beer. you can spit it in the full beer, but then you gotta, you can't just leave it there. You gotta at least get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. When you think uh, about it, man, that you know the guy going down on the girl with the book of secrets and yeah. the cum and you know, like you know, I was like whatever teenage years being like, all right, that guy like came in her mouth. Holy shit! I mean, that's, that's some, some heavy stuff. Man. That's heavy stuff too. It <laughs> yeah. definitely was risque, man. But it was real high school. I mean, this is shit that really. Yeah, happened, right? I, I remember. I no one was it. willing to show it. I, I saw it with my uncle. Ooh, and my cousin and hey, and took me and and he was. I think. A little, we were, he was a little taken aback, like, oh, fuck, I just, you know, I'm not even his kid's parent. And I just took him to this, like, you know, you know, and he yep. goes, he was saying, like, just to be clear, like the crazy stuff, it wasn't even like the sex stuff. It was the amount of drinking. There's not that much drinking that goes on <laughs> and trying to downplay that. Like, we're not going to talk about the most about. Yeah, yeah. He, we're talking about the solo cups. Like, that's fun. hilarious. But yeah, man, times, you know, times Ooh. are still going strong and still out there uh, banging it out. So good for you. And Thanks, the, new, the new game show is out now. Cash at your door on E. You can check it out. And as always, we appreciate the time, dude. Thank you guys as always for having me. Always fun coming on here. I appreciate you guys. And I really appreciate the kind words about One Minute Man. It means a lot. Thank you. It's awesome. I love it. You're killing Thank it. You. Both of you guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, Have a good one, dude. Have a good one, yep. Later. All right, big shout out to Jason Biggs. I swear to God, I'm not paying these people to say nice things about One Minute Man, but uh, but they keep doing it, so I'll take it. Uh, Jason Biggs is the man. He's like, I, it's it's crazy to me to think that someone that I knew, at, not didn't know personally, but knew as a uh, an actor and in like in in my day, like a icon in a way, like a cult classic icon, like a teenage comedy, like the peak, you know, that. 20 years later, he's watching my shit and telling me, like, oh, I watch you every day. That's just crazy to me. But uh, that's Biggs for you because he's just like a normal dude who's on the Internet out here like all of us. He just happens to be, you know, one of the most memorable actors of a generation and now a great game show host and an even better podcast guest. He's always the man. So shout out to Jason. Now let's get into Taylor Tomlinson, who I am wildly jealous of. Uh, her success as a comedian is astounding very funny she's worked her way up she's uh you know she did a tour with whitney cummings she's made her way up into uh, comedy royalty as she continues now to do a theater tour selling out thousands of tickets all well before she's 30 years old it's the the uh, meteoric rise is nothing short of amazing and uh her interview today is brought to you by sennheiser sennheiser uh are the 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 uh, headphones, the pods that uh, our boy Nick wears, and you know, as an audio video guy and a producer, he has he does nothing but the best. It's the highest sound quality you can get from wireless earbuds on the market today. It's affordable. It's uh, easy. Like they they connect well. It doesn't you know it's not shoddy technology. It's comfortable. It's sound canceling, and that's all because Sennheiser focuses strictly 
on audio quality. When everybody else was like, we gotta have audio and video, and we gotta, we like, don't worry about the quality, we gotta worry about the price, or we gotta worry about the design, or whatever it is, Sennheiser said, fuck all that, we're just focusing on making headphones and buds that just sound good. Our speakers, our fit, our comfort, all of it is gonna make sure that what you're listening to, music, or podcasts, or audiobooks, whatever, is the best listening experience possible. They've got a uh, smart control app that it, that's right on your phone where you can adjust the sound to your personal preference. It's got built-in equalizers. It's noise canceling. 28-hour battery life. Uh, it is just simply put the best listening experience, and uh, it's been going on for 75 years. So the proof is in the pudding, babe. Why settle for anything less than great sound? Head over to Sennheiser.com slash podcast. That's Sennheiser, S E N N. H E I S E R dot com slash podcast. Use promo code KFC and you'll get 15% off the Momentum 2 Wireless 2 earbuds. That's the Momentum True Wireless 2 earbuds when you go to Sennheiser, S E N N Heiser dot com slash podcast and use promo code KFC at checkout. 15% off for amazing headphones. Go get it. Taylor Tomlinson on KFC Radio. Let's talk to her. How are you, love? Good. Good. Do you yeah. guys do headphones or no headphones? Nah, no nah. headphones. You can put them on if you want. but No, I'm not going to be the only dweeb in headphones. <laughs> I feel like I get too hot in them, and then it's gross. You but like, what's too. the point of them? Why do I need them? Yeah, we don't need them right now. You know, yeah. We're not listening to anything. But it's like I, sweaty I, ears. Yeah, yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of disgusting, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. pretty gross. Um, so. Things have been good for you, huh? Yeah. I feel like yeah. you're killing it. I'm so surprised. Yeah, no, I mean, things it's... it's like, all right. I'm always surprised when things are going good for anybody. So, <laughs> well, like, like, wow, life's working. It, all it's, right. it's an awkward... It's a little bit awkward when you've been doing well in the past couple of years, I feel like. It is, Because yeah. it's like, hey, uh, your life's over, but mine's peaking. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is weird to have your agents calling you like, COVID's been great, great for you. Yeah. 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 Like, Ooh, maybe we can don't we, say that. Yeah. Can we rework <laughs> that a little bit? It's a private line. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it, it was been it, good for me and Georgia senators. <laughs> 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 but, like, you know, I mean, it was, if you're in entertainment and comedy and podcasts and the internet and all that, it was, you know, I always, yeah. I always try to rework it. Like, we brought entertainment to the people when they needed it at home. Right, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, whatever, make yourself dude. Out to We're be the a hero. hero. Yeah. <laughs> First They're banging pots for us at seven <laughs> o'clock. <Move> over. <laughs> now that people don't have a commute, we're here for you to listen to while you make dinner out of a can again. <laughs> Hot dogs and beans again. But your podcast is on. <laughs> every, every night, hot dogs, beans, and dumb hypotheticals. Like, <laughs> these just assholes just doing a podcast. Yep. <laughs> That's what saved the pandemic. That was it. I am essential. That was it. <laughs> essential workers, man. No, but I mean, uh, you, I mean, you like co headlined with Whitney, right? Yeah, we did some outdoor shows in the yeah. fall. Yeah, Whitney and I did. We That's... did like a couple drive ins, and then the other ones were just like, we set up some tables mm. in a field, <laughs> and it's a venue now. Yeah. Like, turns out you could put a stage pretty much anywhere there's an open field or parking lot, and we did. Yeah. <laughs> so we it's did like, like Coach Taylor building the field in the middle of Texas. <laughs> like, exactly. We'll play anywhere in the mud bowl. <laughs> that's, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, there's nothing to turn your nose up at, though. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I mean, she's a she's a monster. Winnie Cummings yeah. is a fucking monster. Yeah, I feel like she she kind of like put together her like girl squad Avengers crew in the middle of. of I always like right. every time I looked up, she had like it Tim was, like, Dillon you in it too, a, though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was like Olivia Munn, you, Tim Dillon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think I I use I've been on Inst. Whitney's Instagram stories as a credit now. Yeah. Like, it gets more views than Yo, isn't a lot that, of shows. Isn't that weird though? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I feel like you could put uh, certain podcast appearances as a credit over like the Tonight Show or some other shit these days. It's oh, like, fully. you know, you do a Rogan, you do some of Whitney. It's like, yeah, that's where people are going to find you. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. I feel like the, uh, I think we were talking about it a little bit, uh, just about like, more internet videos and like, you're young enough that you can do TikTok and Instagram and just not barely. look like an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> just you just barely. made the cutoff. Yeah, like, you can do TikTok if you're like really young or like really old. Yes, <laughs> that in between oh, you're like, fucked. Ancient people mm -hmm. do amazing on TikTok. <laughs> yes, where it's just like I've seen like old ladies just being like, "This is my outfit." That, like, I know exactly million, who you're you talking about. about. <laughs> she's she's pretty fucking funny though. She's too. great. I love yeah. her. She's like, "Here's my outfit today. If you don't like it, I don't care." Like, <laughs> I kind of like your style, lady. But yeah, you're, but like, we, the 
grandmas. Like, and- Rhea's 23, right? Mm-hmm. We have a girl here that works here, Rhea. She's 23. And, like, she gets told to, like, go take care of her kids. Yeah, they're like, get off, grandma. <laughs> yeah. Go kill yourself. You're almost dead, grandma. <laughs> she was like, I'm 23. Oh, my God. Everybody I think is my age on TikTok, I always look at their description. They're always, like, 23. I know. Every time I'm like, this person's, like, 27, Come on. right? Yeah. Yeah. We can hang. Yeah. They're always 23, and yeah. they have, like, 30 million followers, and I'm super embarrassed every <laughs> time. <laughs> I, I feel like you – when did you put out the, the Netflix special? It or, came out March 3rd, I believe. So literally a week before everything shut down. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so that was your, your, your 27, you were 27 when that. I was 26. For, I was Cause 26 I feel like 20, 27 out. is the quarter life crisis time. You think, I, 20, like. oh, I mean, I'm probably still in it. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> well, like my, my theory always was like when you, you're 14 to 18, you have like a four year run of like middle school. Right. Through uh, through high school, Just and then you have eighteen. But then you yeah. have eighteen to twenty two. You have another yeah. four year period, and then you go twenty two to twenty six. Mm-hmm. But there's no graduation. There's no next thing. So when yeah. all of a sudden you're twenty seven, and that's when it finally sets in that this is just forever, man. Yeah, you have like childhood, sweaty college. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? For, yeah, forever <laughs> yeah, after yeah, that, yeah, and that's when you're like. And I remember, uh, yeah, he, he, you had yours around then, right? I was 26, 26. I think, yeah, where I was like, and we, we were not as successful at that time. And I just no. had like this breakdown where I was like, I was like, nothing I do works. This fucking place sucks. Like yep. college is a four year funeral for your dreams. And then you just fucking die out. And I was like, there's a whole thing. I, and I, then I, 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 I thought it was a crisis and it's just, it's just life. Like it, I yeah. haven't got, I haven't, I've never come out the other side. No, oh, that's just, just how just it goes. It. This is so depressing. I, yeah. I, you know, it is. Welcome I, to KFC right I, when I was, when I was 27, we, we had the podcast, but it was much more. We were still just writing at that point. And I wrote a blog being like, what do people do? Like, what do they – like, if you don't have a hobby or a talent, like, I was like, I just go or to bars family. and I dr- – Yeah, you don't have that. I'm like, I just go to bars, I drink, I go out to dinner, and that's it. And yeah. I was – and I, I asked my friends, and they were like, have you tried going to, like, a museum? And I was like, what the fuck is that going to do to me? I don't care. I don't want to go to a museum. And I ended up going for a walk that night. I walked, like, 60 blocks, and I was just like, what am I doing? Where is You know? And that was 27, too, and I feel like that's just the age that it starts to happen. But it, but it, he's right. It's not, like, something special. It's just life. It's just, yeah. It it's is. it's not a quarter life crisis. It's a it's life. It's a realization of reality. And also, this I'm, is I'm it. also doing the math. I'm like, I don't think it's a quarter. I know. <laughs> Not at this rate. <laughs> Fucking hope not. I know. <laughs> well, and every, like, it's so tough because your 20s suck because, like, everyone's at different spots. Like, yeah. I have so many friends who are, like, in their relationship forever. They're like, this mm-hmm. is my life partner, and we've been together forever, and I'm super happy. But their career isn't where they want it to be. And so they're like, well, you have your career where it's supposed to be. And I'm like, yeah, but you have, like, a husband. Like, <laughs> do you understand? So ev- it's like the grass is always greener yeah, for everybody. Absolutely. And, like, my friend Katie had her second baby, and she's, like, got this beautiful marriage and this beautiful family. And I remember we went to see her after she had her first kid. And I was like holding this like week old baby and I'd like just called off an engagement and I was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> like <laughs> this look, and she had like the windows open and like the breeze was wafting through these curtains. Freshly she baked got. muffins. Truly <laughs> yeah, though. And yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. we're trying this non-gluten thing. And she's like, I'm sitting on this inflatable donut because he ripped my vagina to shreds. And I'm just like, you are doing it. Like she yeah. just looked like an angel. Yeah, but don't you think that she like watches your special or sees you on stage and is like, oh I my God. I don't actually. No. <laughs> That's what everybody says. Everybody's like, but they look at your life and I they're like, I don't be a, know. I don't think think she does. <laughs> maybe I think not. She goes maybe to not church right now. And but she loves her husband and she raises her kids and she doesn't have to find content for Instagram because her kids <laughs> look amazing every day and are doing some cute shit every day. Meanwhile, I'm like, ah, current events. What yeah. can we do some crowd work about? It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the hustle for content is one you know no one's gonna cry for internet comedians or content creators but the idea of just like every day find some shit be funny be relatable yeah. be observant be cute be it's just like no, no. yeah I can't I loved your breakdown on Instagram where you were talking about how you hated that you knew so much about TikTok yeah uh, I, uh, like all these children who uh, are just I'm like, like why having do I sex this? with each other and they're like <laughs> I guess this person's over here now and they're cheating on them and I hate that I know this I do I mean there, there was a stretch there where I was a little too tapped into TikTok and I was like Okay, this is getting creepy. Yeah, yeah. I am old. I am old. I'm double the age of these kids. Like I could be their parent, and I'm right. I'm like, well, 
she's sleeping with who? Oh my god! <laughs> that's what's funny. Too, like they just made an app out of Glee. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's all that is. And they all I just love, fuck each other. Whatever. Whatever. That's what's mm. funny though. They're like, you know, I I kissed him once. I'm like. You're saying that because you're a child and you're not allowed to say what really happens. Right. And, and I can't say what really happens either. Your sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. That's what's going to happen. I remember when you had your, your breakdown over that. We were like, dude, I just lay in bed at night and watch like teenagers dance. Like, yeah. I, got, I, got, I said like, it, I was I like, can't, oh, like, oh, like, oh. I can't do this anymore. Like, yeah. like, my algorithm's fucked. I just can't have it. Yeah, that, the, the algorithm... Mm. You know, it's a it's a look in the mirror when you see what what some of these apps are recommended for you. I'm like, I gotta change some things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that should not be the case. I've been trying to really carefully cultivate my my FYP because mm-hmm. it's you know I just want to see like cooking and travel and like sad kids who are. <laughs> I relate to or, <laughs> who are just upset, you know. Like I don't Angsty mind a, children, please. Yeah, I don't mind a crying video. Like, tell us how you feel, Kelsey. I don't, give a shit. I don't care who's like sleeping with whoever in the hype house. Like I saw them both go into the master bedroom, and uh oh, that was twenty minutes. Like I don't care about that, but I I love it when they're just like, I am never gonna get out of college debt. And I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're, you're right, right, girl. You I are hope, totally right. I hope you go viral. <laughs> so you make two hundred dollars a year through the creation. Fund. <laughs> what would I mean? I can't even imagine living in a in a house, a content house like that. Oh, That's got to be a fucking nightmare. Yeah. You no. Know? Even if even when you are young, like now, for you know, forget it. But even if I was like eighteen and like about that whole scene, I feel I still feel like living in a house like that twenty four seven is fucking nuts. I mean, I opted to not live in a frat house. So yeah, and there yeah. and there aren't cameras in those. Right. <laughs> right. Oh my, oh my god. They're not even. But then trying. again, they are making like. Fifty million dollars a year, I so know. maybe it's maybe it's a lot easier to do that when and you're making money hand over fist. It's such little effort that yes. they put into these. Like they do like the dances, but it's like barely. They're just <laughs> like we're making money. Like, yeah, look yeah. At this. We're barely doing the movement. We're just hot and young, and we have three hundred million followers. I know that's the uh, the the podcast here that's thriving. BFF says Josh Richards, who's like he's a smart kid. He's more like a businessman, and he's definitely like growing up. But he, he was like, I'm not a good dancer, but I just like, he's like, he's a cute kid. He's a good looking guy. He doesn't right. say it, but he just smiles and like barely moves and he knows it and yeah. admits it. And it's, I'm always on the side of internet creators and people. Cause we're kind of one of them yeah. when people are like, you know, how like, that's not, they're not talented. How come they're famous? How come they're making money? Yeah. And I'm always like, no, this is just the new like way. But it's getting more and more difficult because it used to be like, no, that's a funny writer or a funny kind of a comic or something like a funny video creator or a talented editor. Now it's just like, no, that's just a girl with an ass who dances. And I yeah. got I can't even defend it anymore. You know? Yeah, it is tough. And like, you know, TikTok is a specific skill. Like I have like comedian friends who will be like, you're good at TikTok. How do you do it? And I'm like, I'm barely good at TikTok, <laughs> but all right. And I've, I've just started, this is what I tell people when they're standups who don't know how to do like just regular TikTok videos that aren't them doing standup on stage. I'm like, just like do one of your tweets, but act like you're doing something else. Yes. Act like you're on your way to something and just do the video where you're like, I was just thinking about this and it, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. And then just end it really like three Abruptly seconds. end it. Yep. Abruptly end it like you're on your way out. People there it love is. that. They you're like cleaning something. Effort. You're cleaning the fucking. I mean, that is the yeah. exact advice that Kevin and I have been given, and we just really? refuse to listen to. It. Yeah, it's <laughs> it Nick, just, Nick has given us that advice just on multiple occasions. It's, Be snacking. Like, I just oh, thinking, I can do that. <laughs> I just. It's not even necessarily that I can't do. It's not the individual videos. It's mm-hmm. the whole. It's just the idea of doing another app. Oh, yeah. Like we yeah. gotta draw the line somewhere, I know. because next year there's gonna be another TikTok, and there's gonna be an, maybe not on that level, but there's just we're just gonna keep adding. I already, apps. I drew, I drew it at Snapchat. Yeah, I was, Snapchat I was, was, was that done. was a tough one. Snapchat, for me. I was like, I'm out. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm, but guess I'm what? We're what? not as successful. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like re- realistically, if they add like four more apps in the next like six, eight years, are you, just, are, are you gonna have to put up a tweet, an Instagram, a TikTok, a Snapchat, a this, a that, a that, a that, a that? I mean, I haven't seen any like touring acts in comedy clubs that say like, you know him from Snapchat. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I've seen people blow up on Instagram and TikTok and stuff, but not so much Snapchat, right? Sna- Snapchat, Snapchat. I, get, I get heckled by construction workers a lot <laughs> about Snapchat. <laughs> Like what? you're the guy from Snapchat. Yeah, really? you, you yes. would be surprised. I, I mean, by Snapchat's a lot. I mean, it things... happens five times, but it's still like 
I, I think there was a while where Snapchat was our like most viewed thing. Really? Yeah. yeah. I You're not I'm because not you don't really it. follow, and because there's not. Th what's crazy about Snapchat is you can't see how many followers people have. And I think the people need that. They need to be like, oh, this person has like 50 million followers. They're like super popular. Yeah. So because it's not like quantified, people don't talk about it. And because they, they're just using it to send like naked pictures of each other back that's and forth. That's what I thought. I thought that's it was just for what teens it is, to but... flirt. <laughs> yeah. Isn't yeah. that what oh, they do? Oh, it's definitely that. They exactly ask that, for each but... other's snaps. Snap. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 but, when you know you really. But also like we always get run up on by people like running like live Snapchat pictures and yep. stuff like that. Yeah, it but is. people take, a lot of people take pictures with their Snapchat instead of like their camera. Really? Yeah. So, like, yeah. that's what I mean. It's like, wow. and so you don't, don't need it, them. but if you like, the more Hold you on, have, I gotta, let me download it. <laughs> 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 so, what's cooking now? I mean, uh, on tour yeah. and back on stage, and yeah, we've been in clubs. We, it's just me. I've been in clubs uh, for the last, you know, since February, I guess. Uh, we went back into clubs like before we were vaccinated, but it was still like lower capacity and spread yeah. out and whatnot. And then now that people are getting vaccinated, they've been full capacity and we'll see what happens. But um, the theater tour starts in a few weeks. I'm in Minneapolis on September Theater 16. tour is no fucking joke, girl. Yeah, I'm so That's a big deal. Yeah, I'm excited. Those are big numbers. Yeah, it's literally all I've ever wanted. So now I'm like, what? What, what do I do? Yeah. Like, it, this is all I asked yeah. for. I have to get like new dreams. Are, are you like soaking that in? I'm trying. I'm yeah. really trying. I'm because uh, it really is like, you know that 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 you're so young that you probably will you know do what's next arenas and keep going. But if if it were to just max out at theater tours, that's like an amazing life and career. You know what I mean? Totally. Fine. And you got it at 27. You yeah. bitch. <laughs> you goddamn bitch. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of weird when you like, you know. I, I was never. Were you somebody who was like, I'm gonna like achieve my dreams and like. And then when you did, you're kind of like, I told myself I was gonna, this was gonna happen when I was 12. I'm just kind of like stumbling my way through it. So I don't know where it, where it ends, where I want it to end, where it's gonna go. It's just like I don't know whatever's next. Yeah. But I were mean, you like set on this? I mean, I started doing stand up when I was 16, and I kind of sort of fell into it. And then like, I think around like 18, 19 is when I was like, oh, I actually have to try harder mm -hmm. like if you want to do that. i had somebody tell me that they were like if you don't make it it's your fault because mm -hmm. you are good but you don't go up enough mm -hmm. and i was like so okay. you knew you, or at least people knew that you had something by like 18 like yeah. you, you stood out from the the rest i guess i mean people were very nice to me i also you know who knows i'm sure a lot of people are nice to younger comics who start in like their teens because yeah, you're just like, describing getting you. groomed yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and I then I went back to his to basement. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I suck. I was supposed to fuck them. Oh, yeah, I you, suck. Know, you know, there's Sorry, some old, guys. there's some old guy who's like, yeah, I talked to that bitch when she was younger. I just thought we were pals. Oh, I, my that I was 16. Was guys took a real interest in my stand up. No, I was not. I was not cute. So I don't think anybody was grooming me. Uh, yeah. yeah, were you doing uh, stand up for like the the Christian crowd? Yeah. Yeah. I really? Was doing, like, so churches. you were probably fucking hilarious. I mean, I don't know. Or they were just very forgiving. Uh, <laughs> it's not great. Like, I mean, look, if you do like whatever, if you're a Christian and you're clean and you go up and you're 17, like, yeah. who's going to boo you? Right, like, right. Even if you don't do well, they're like probably giving you pity chuckles. Right, uh, right. And then started doing clubs and stuff when I was like 18. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that once i really started going for it i started setting goals but like even they weren't like huge like i, I just was like i remember the first years so i was like all i want is a conan set it's like all i want and then i got like last comic standing and like a comedy central set and everyone's like that's awesome and i'm like but all i want is I conan wanted. though yeah. i just want conan like i'm very like laser focused on stuff and that's how i was with um the netflix special is like my manager was like trying to get me other stuff and like trying to get me to work on other projects and i was like yeah yeah but what did netflix say mm -hmm. because that's all i care about right and like when am i get like they'll send me auditions for things and they're like it shoots september through january and i'm like in the middle of my theater tour like in the middle <laughs> yeah. of my dream you want me to go play somebody's friend in a sitcom like what do you think I'm doing this for? Like, right. I only wanted to audition for stuff so people would come and see me do stand up. And, and now, now I'm getting to come and see me. Yeah. 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 What are we doing? Right. What are we doing? Right. So, yeah, I think I'm I'm a pretty, like, goals oriented person. And I try to be, like, pretty 
focused. Uh, but I usually only allow myself to have like one goal at a time. And then I get there and I'm like, okay, now you get another one. What do you think would be next after theater tour? I mean, I do have a project I'm working on right now that uh, we're, you know, I can't really talk about it, but uh, hopefully it, it happens. You know how it is like when you're, you're in like. No, I definitely no, don't. Okay. We, Whatever you're about to say, I have not no fucking <laughs> clue. <laughs> So you uh, know when you're creating a TV show how it goes. Yeah. You can go fuck yourself, but uh, you've heard stories yeah. uh, where you know you've had more successful people on your podcast. Yeah, you, yeah. you've heard talk uh, on the street in hushed tones. Uh, you know when there it like takes forever to make anything, and and you never know if it's gonna get. Me. And I've had like de- stuff in development over the years that didn't go, so you never want to be like I'm doing this and yeah. then it doesn't happen. And, it, is uh, it like acting or is it more comedy stuff? Are you, uh, like, is it going to be like scripted no, type it's stuff? No, it's more yeah. scripted. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. It's the next wanna, natural spot, right? Yeah, you never want to say anything. Like I remember, like Whitney and I sold a pilot and during the pandemic, she like we did her podcast and she was like, we sold a show. And I was like, can we say that? Mm-hmm. Is that okay? Because, you know, it didn't end up going. And I still get questions like on Instagram where like, when is that show coming out? And I'm like, no, 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 we sold a script. Right. Like, that people doesn't don't mean- realize. Like I had a 100%. development deal uh in my early 20s after i did like new faces at, at jfl and it was like with abc and there was a deadline article and for years people asked about it where yeah. they're like what's that show coming out i was like right. no, no 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 no. it was just and then you have to explain what people a development hear the term is. development pilot like all that yeah. stuff and they think you have a tv show that's gonna run for yeah three seasons it's like yeah. oh no no no, like, no there's close. so many opportunities for rejection right? yeah <laughs> yeah even when you're successful there's just a million times well, people can say no the fact that like I, it blows my mind that Whitney Cummings is still going through that. You know what I mean? Oh, After I know. like she's she's a fucking full blown showrunner like multiple yeah. times, huge success, and then it's like, yeah, like yeah, we'll pass on. It's what? It's crazy. It's like well, then I have no fucking shot. <laughs> oh my gosh, exactly. Yeah. That's how I felt too. I was like, what? What are we? Let's just make the show on your Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> let's just do yeah. That. yeah, yeah, for real. It's like at this point, what do you even need? I get, you know, there is that though. It's like uh, less and less. I mean, if you're gonna do like a full scale TV show, obviously, right. but there really are so much, so fewer barriers of entry now. If you want to just like do it yourself or yeah. do like low. I mean, the shit that I shoot every day is just like a cell phone that's propped up on a fucking box. Sometimes, you yeah. know, it's like yeah. you can just do it yourself. But and I think especially with like younger people, they just want consistent. Mm-hmm. content mm-hmm. i mean it's why all those hype house kids like don't have to learn how to dance and people still watch them every day like i've started doing i started hosting a podcast um that should be out soon that you know deals with like celebrities and fans and stuff and like the the fans of like big tiktokers are like they're like you mean so much to me you've been Weird. with me through I so know. much you've gotten me through so much and i'm like what these people don't do shit <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking do about also this through? app's like, been out for six I months know. how yeah. are you this invested but then you yeah. meet the tiktok people and you're like oh they actually do do shit like they're really mm. engaged with their fans yeah. and they're like really nice like kind of grounded people and you're right. like what am i doing i don't do shit i guess <laughs> like you get so judgmental i it. do think it is about like i feel like they they reply and they dm yeah. back and it feel, it's just like this is a girl or a guy who's like my age who has some fame and also that one time said to me like no no you are really pretty and like keep doing it. and it's like that's yeah. that's what matters to them yeah and they're so accessible mm-hmm. in a way that like yeah i think younger audiences want that they want you to be accessible they want you to be there every day there is a girl her name's Anna something. I don't follow her. She's on TikTok. I'm sure you've seen her. She's a girl who does the Starbucks videos. Mm-hmm. Okay. She was not, I didn't follow her. I still don't. I sometimes go check her page to see what she's up to because I like consistency. <laughs> and they TikTok just kept feeding me her videos. And at first I was like, he just drinks Starbucks? Okay. <laughs> and then after like a few months, I was like, a Starbucks drink is yeah. it? Yeah. And now I'm like so invested. I'm like, how's she doing after that breakup? Like, I just, it, it does, it's comforting. Yeah. And you feel like they become like your friend. When <laughs> I, so when I really was like, wait a second, this is weird. When there was a couple that like, went through their divorce oh, yeah. publicly on TikTok. I don't know their names, but they were like the couple. Is it Mike and Kat? I think probably, <laughs> yeah. Probably. I mean, they were, like, Mike and they were like weeping, being like, but we still love each other and like, we love you guys. And I was like, what oh. the were fuck? Were they both weeping? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it wasn't Mike and Kat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, only Kat was weeping. Come on, Kat's team. What did they do with the, inst- with the TikTok account? I didn't, I didn't, did they I didn't keep up with it enough. But <laughs> yeah, like what, what do you do? I mean, it's like, I mean that's gotta you be motherfuckers like, stay together, okay? You, yeah. you guys <laughs> 
fight it, all right? Like, fake it. It is, like, kind of a joke, but also, like, I think about, like, uh, like the opening scene of Wedding Crashers when it's like, who gets the miles? They're my miles. Yeah. Like, yeah. who gets the who account? Because guess what? That account is worth a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you have... That's why it's uh, just, just fake it like every other celebrity couple has ever had to do. I know, right? I mean, maybe they maybe they have an agreement, like, you keep the account, but you still get a percentage or something. Yeah. Like, Wouldn't that be great? You yeah. run the account, I still just get the cash in can you imagine being like a lawyer in their 50s right now who has to be like they're like with these like TikTok 22 law. year old divorces yeah where they're like well, okay but he can have the account but he only posts on thursdays and they're like what you, who wants the kid they're like oh we don't care like that you can you have the dog the and the kid whatever the kid. bro yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but the account though probably really the government important. gets the kid yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah i feel like if if like she got the account in in the couple I'm thinking of, and I'm like, well, that's just you cheated. I'm sure that yeah, dude yeah, cheated. Yeah. If she, she gets was the like, account. I'm fucking keeping this thing. Yeah, yeah. right. And he was probably like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. you're right. See, you're right. I, you're right. I'd be like, I don't fucking care. I'm still keeping the yeah. account. I know. <laughs> they were real classy about it though. They like didn't tell anybody. They were like, we're not gonna talk about what happened, but we, you know, we love we're you just guys. Gonna, and yeah. We're just gonna separate. And everybody's like, tell us what happened. And she's just like, I'm really happy now. And you're like, but tell us what happened. Uh -huh. And they'll they'll follow every day just on the off chance that maybe she does tell oh, you. That's so smart. Yeah. To not tell you so you. Keep I would checking. just say things like details coming soon. It's like oh, technically, yeah. you know, a decade can be soon in the grand scheme of things. I'll yeah. tell you guys when I'm good and ready. Yeah, not technically a lie. <laughs> yeah. I'm my TikTok lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, you, you are. I think you are young enough, and you're with it enough. I think. I think you're being, you know, I don't know, self-deprecating or whatever you want to call it, but. I did not get TikTok before the pandemic. I didn't get it at all. I, I got on it because I had a guy hosting for me at a club in San Jose. His name's Joe Begley, I believe. He's on TikTok. He, he's doing pretty well. And uh, he was like, you got to get on TikTok. And I was like, all right. So I made one, didn't look at it for months. And then we like hired like a social media person for a little bit while the special was being promoted and they were like you got to do tiktok and i was like you do too this is your tiktok <laughs> now here's the password mm -hmm. and they just posted all my special clips that we had and available worked. and yeah we hit like half a million followers and i didn't even touch it and then i got into tiktok <laughs> where, where, what are you doing man what are you doing i keep everyone always tells me like like listen Everything goes viral. Like every, like you just got to go viral one time, and then you get all these followers. I'm like, okay, then yeah. make it fucking happen. It's harder now. Like yeah. earlier yeah, on, there, there was yeah. a gold rush. Yeah, and I think the pandemic, like a lot of mm -hmm. people got on TikTok because you had the time, and then you realize how addictive it is. Like yeah. there are nights where I'm like, what should I watch? I'm like, nothing sounds good. No movie, no TV show. I'm like, I, but I want to watch something. What is it? And it's like, oh, you want to sit in the bath and watch TikTok yep. for 90 minutes. All of a sudden you're like, it's 11.30. Yeah. I'm, I've been in this tub for two and a half hours. It's incredible. And nothing distracts you from the terror of imminent death than TikTok. <laughs> nothing else made me like forget what was going on. Yeah. No, it's TikTok. a weird, it is a weird like psychological thing. I don't know if they like stumbled into that or if they knew when they were making the app that they were creating like a hypnosis thing They've got but you that. just it's the you whole just screen go. it's so satisfying yeah. and the and it comes on right away like yeah. it's, it's just like in your face and you just go see i don't that's what i don't like i yeah, I, I don't yeah. use tiktok i'm i'm a okay. contrarian i'm like it's too popular can't do it mm -hmm. okay. um and also yeah, there's one thing it. <laughs> <laughs> also it's really more just fucking I'm disdain it. also <laughs> how do i log in <laughs> It was, I, I put, I think I have two videos in my TikTok. Oh, I have more now because of the smoothie stuff. But I had oh, yeah, two that videos was, that originally. Was John's brilliant idea Those, was to chug uh, milkshakes and protein shakes and just like let them drip all over. And as I read a word of the day. And it actually That's worked. That's actually a great idea. It actually worked pretty well. <laughs> and then I just stopped working out. So I stopped having protein shakes. <laughs> That's the only reason I stopped. I just stopped exercising. <laughs> I'm not going to eat a protein shake without a sweat going. That's crazy. God, when you, you would be like, the, the words were always so ridiculous. Yeah. You know? You'd be just there's protein dripping while he says an SAT word. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> so so hey, Taylor, guess what? If you and you fucking your million followers, whatever you got, like it, I might be back on that train. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that you stopped because you stopped working out. I don't give a fuck. Start drinking milkshakes again, man. <laughs> just make them regular milkshakes. They don't have to be protein shakes. All right. Just drink and talk about vocabulary. Let's yeah, go. It was, it was just I just strictly stopped working out. That was it. <laughs> if that if that had popped. Could you imagine that if you were like more famous and successful and rich because of that than everything you've ever done? Oh, I'd kill myself tomorrow. <laughs> uh, hard, hard to turn that into a live tour. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's the fucking milkshake mustache guy. Yeah. Like, get me a gun. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, it's <laughs> a grind. I'll hit the later. <laughs> <laughs> it is a grind, though. But, I mean, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been pretty, like, fast and, and quick for you, too, though. I mean, you happy? Sure. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, no one's asked me that. Are you happy? <laughs> yeah. Theater tour? Am I supposed to be? <laughs> uh, you know, I happy yeah. uh in theory i think i am i'm, I'm what if you are I, what if you are at, like truly happy and that's just what happiness is and we have a misguided sense of I'll, happiness i'll kill myself tomorrow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> speaking our language get me a gun if we'll get get it. the jar down get yeah the jar. yeah we have we have a, anytime we make a too dark of a joke about basically killing yourself we put a dollar in the jar oh, so you might have to throw a dollar in there oh Taylor. my god if i did that i'd have the money for a vacation that i won't take because if i take a vacation i'll kill myself uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I, I have a lot of people in my life who are, who are good at doing that for me. Where something good happens, and they're like, "Are you feel? Are you letting it soak in? Just feel mm-hmm. it for a minute." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and, we, and then I like pet the good news like a hamster, and I feel it, and then I set crush it, it free, and, and then it. I crush it with my anxiety. Exactly. <laughs> I almost said set it free. That's a fucking lie. Absolutely, I crush it. It's I'm dead, so, and then I have to find will, a new hamster. I will find something to be afraid of because mm-hmm. even when something good happens I'm like well I'm gonna blow it I know. <laughs> I'm gonna blow it well that's kind of why I was getting all existential because it's like when, when it's something is it's harder when when it's something tangible like bam you're on a theater tour and the tickets are selling mm-hmm. you know it's like yeah, that's that's fucking it so yeah. I hope I'm happy because this is you know this is where it goes and this is where I want it to get and I got it like a lot of the internet shit's kind of abstract it's like you can have a lot of followers, but what does that really mean? And that, that, that's like if you're moving thousands of tickets and people are liking your stuff, like I hope it. I hope you're happy because it's because otherwise we have to go internal. Yeah, like, man, oh, nobody wants to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I yeah. Look inside. I just want to focus on external validation. But <laughs> right. if you get all of it, you're like, oh no. Right. <laughs> I'm rotting from within. It's <laughs> bad news. I know. I was talking to someone where I'm like, I just, I don't know if I should have added a third show in Minneapolis because, like, what if it doesn't sell out? And they were like, Shut Are you really complaining? <laughs> yeah. Are you really worrying about the fact that you? are doing a third theater show in yeah. Minneapolis and I was like you're right I'll shut up I, yeah. <laughs> there's only certain right. people who you can say that one I too know, and I know. A lot of, most people are going to be like go fuck yourself I know but yeah. hey it's it's champagne problems, right? I'm very very grateful. I'm extremely yeah. grateful. Any worries or fears or dissatisfaction I have is with myself <laughs> and my own uh, lack of belief in my own abilities. Like I'm, I really try to work really really hard because I think I've been really really lucky in mm-hmm. this business. Um, like I think I'm talented, but like so many people are talented. Yeah. And uh, I try to be like. I think luck. Of the we were just having the conversation the other day, right? It's like you got to be talented, yes, yeah. and then. I think there was a third thing that we credited. Wasn't Hard there? work. I guess uh, so. No, no. That one. <laughs> fuck that. Not that You're one. Like, what? I mean, but maybe if that it would come in third of anything. Yeah. It's not Did second. Did you not hear my yeah. milkshake <laughs> yeah. story? Work we hard. are definitely not the hard work guys. I didn't even pick up those milkshakes. I sent an intern to Burger King. <laughs> but the luck factor is so huge. You and know? I think like, I think people are are scared to admit that. I think people yeah. feel like it's yeah, like like it, like, it like just I got really lucky. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Doesn't yeah. mean that you're not funny or not talented, but like you know, the right person saw your your video or the right thing went viral, and like that's why we were just talking to Bert before this, saying like there are we were watching milk crate video, milk crate challenge videos, oh, yeah. and the people doing commentary are just regular people on their phones, and they're so fucking funny, Dude, and they're not know. pros, they're not comics, they're not comedians, you know. They're, and I'm just like, that person's way funnier than I am, <laughs> you yeah. know? And that's just a regular dude who delivers the mail or whatever. Yeah. And he just, you know, didn't get a break or didn't... I mean, that's where I think there's a little bit of hard work. Like, you got to put yourself out there and you got to do it right. But yeah, you got to get lucky. Like, there's you got to have the drama. <laughs> yeah. You got to be in, like, a Christian cult for the first 20 years of your life. There's not you a know? lot. There's a lot not in your control. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the... Uh, what's, like, the best... What's the biggest change in your life in the last like you know since netflix and since theater tour and all that oh we like sell out shows now it's crazy i'd never sold out a club weekend before the pandemic i remember like we we're getting to a point where i'd sell out maybe like one right a weekend or like no but maybe- what so like now that you're selling tickets like what in your like day-to-day life outside of work is the biggest change 
Oh. Is it like where you live or how you live or where you travel or where you go out or what you eat or, you know, Shop at Whole Foods now? Yeah, I mean, look. <laughs> I go to Whole Only Foods, organic, I okay? I look at none of the prices. <laughs> I find out at the end. Okay, like everyone else. I'm like, this is, I'm also finding this out for the first time. The cashier's like, why don't you shut the fuck up? <laughs> and I'm like, wow, avocados are that much, huh? Bring it up. <laughs> Let me Give get me another, another one. one. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd known they were only six dollars per avocado, <laughs> I would have gotten more. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, definitely shop at home. Now. Wait, I definitely were, were got a better you? apartment. I, I'm, I'm splitting time between New York and LA now, so I have a place here and a place in LA. All right, so, and yeah. even that's like pretty cool. Yeah, uh, definitely. And you know, like, more what do you like better? Because I feel like New York and LA are the two places that everyone like, we're like, it's over for these cities. The pandemic killed them both. They're both dead. Everyone has to move to Middle America. And yeah. so, which one do you think is better? I'll say. I mean, it, it's different. They're different. I mean, I think doing the road as a comic out of New York is easier because of the time difference. So yeah. You're like gaining those three hours when you go east to west coast. Um, that's easier. I mean, obviously, you can get up more here on stage. We know this. Mm -hmm. um, I like that you can walk everywhere here, but like but you in also LA, run into like a bunch of people with needles in their arms who are fucking. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's that too. Like, and it's New York is so up and down for me. Like every time I'm like, this is amazing. It's mm -hmm. like I I got to, uh, I think it was like right after I got the place here. I remember I'd been here for like a week and I was like, everything's awesome. I actually really like it here. I could probably move here full time if I wanted to, and then like. Ten minutes later, I found a dead cockroach in my makeup mm. bag, <laughs> and I was like, "Never mind." This fucking city. <laughs> it's just like when I moved in, I like didn't have. I've never moved into an apartment that like had no blinds in it. Yeah. Or curtains. Oh. oh yeah. Byob on that one. It's just what? like open. Guess, yep. Guess yep. what? I'm going on a little over a year in my apartment. Still no blinds or curtains. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. And, and just waking big up every morning like you're welcome, yep. neighbors. <laughs> big windows too. Yeah. Really? Oh, they can see everything. You yep. don't care. Don't give a shit. Wow. <laughs> That's so impressive and also a little. In Unnerving. In, in, in fact, it's because I've become like a voyeur. I'm like, I'm like, I hope they're looking. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Try to mix it up for them. I got different silk robes. Uh, yeah, I really like. I feel like New York really just like, it's amazing one minute and then it's horrific the next, mm -hmm. and it like really makes you work for it. LA, I was here for like three weeks, and then I went back to LA for a week, and as soon as I landed in Burbank, I was like. Yeah. Like I just like decompressed and I was like, I think I've been clenching every muscle in my body. It is a stressful Dude, we place. We were just saying that yeah. like we had to go out to Vegas for like this interview and uh, we, were, we were staying at a hotel. We we're like, you know, what? we'll get massages tomorrow. And because we we're like, we have been like this mm -hmm. for yes. six years, probably. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. my, my shoulders have been up around my ears. It fucking hurts so bad. It's, yeah. like, it's a stressful I mean, city, man. Pain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. But I like to drive. So yeah. I go, I like driving. I grew up in California. So I'm like kind of used to it. One yeah. of those. But also, you know, when I go to bed in New York at night, I'm not like, hope the big one doesn't hit. Yeah. yeah. I've always wondered if that is on people's minds. Oh, it's on there. my mind. <laughs> I can tell you yeah, that. Yeah. Some months are worse than others. There are certain months where I'm like, like, it's I bet coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look, I have my shoes and like go bag by my. Are you bed. ready? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm ready yeah. for the big one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's also one of those things where you're like, well, there's nothing you could do, probably like get under the table. Um, yeah, what do you? I was, what's your? So you have your bag, I just and have that's my, it. My like keys and my stuff. Yeah. And, you know, short of cans and water, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm like I could get somewhere on foot at least. Uh, I was I was saying that yes uh, the other day when we were we were hanging out actually at that hotel, and I was like people like are like oh I could never live in the Northeast. I have to shovel twice a year, yeah. and like well guess what we don't get hit by earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, hurricanes. very rarely mudslides like. It's just it just snows occasionally. The people who yeah. like that's, annually that, are like that's our might, danger. might lose my home. Yeah. You know, it's September again, so this is home losing season. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, we're just on fire every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. forest fires. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was in like fifth grade. They're like, it's in, there's too much ash in the air today, so we're just gonna learn inside. By the way, we what? fixed uh, we fixed the forest fire problem. Did you? It's called doming. You just have a bunch of helicopters pick up a giant dome, and you just dome it off oh why has no one thought of that <laughs> oh my god i just, actually believe they kind Hunger of have games in. yes <laughs> just yes like a fire fight it's like it covering out. a yankee candle yeah <laughs> just, just snuff it out and then just 
and then you're done. <laughs> Breaking no news tonight: KFC Radio has <laughs> solved the forest fire incident. Uh, coming to you, Greg. Why have we not thought of this? The dome thing. It's like, well, Lisa, we just didn't think we could find a dome big enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why why, why haven't we carry? thought of a? It's about the size of an area code. <laughs> <laughs> a glass container the size of an area code. Are any animals getting stuck in there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, all the, all oh, the yeah. lives inside are dead. No doubt. Every human and every child, every everybody's dead. Remember but the fire guy? will stop. Remember that guy from high school who moved to the forest to forage for truffles? Remember the guy, uh, Nicholas Cage's character and Pig is based on? He's gone. That guy's gone. If you were jealous of him, he's gone. Also, if you like venison, we have yeah. we got a lot of that. spot for you. We got a lot of that. <laughs> what, which city is more expensive? I think New York. Yeah. New so, Motherfucker. So <laughs> I'm just waiting for somebody to tell me that it's more. I mean, God, why I don't think. Yeah, I use. I used to try to be like, well, you know, you can walk. It's probably the same, right? <laughs> no. And everyone's like, no, no, no. LA is definitely cheaper, and everyone has a car there, and like yeah. here you can't have a car. And I don't know. I'm very proud of myself when I. You, I came here on the subway alone, and that does not wow. happen very much because mm. it scares me. Yeah. Um, not like in a dangerous way, just in like a, I will get lost. Yeah, I don't yeah. know where I'm going. Like yep. when my boyfriend gives me directions on the subway, he like writes them down like I'm a child yeah. he's like I texted them to you it's this stop that's five stops from where count we are off. count One, them on two, your finger three, yep and I'm, he's like no where are you gonna get off I'm like 28 he's like that's right go get them scam and I'm like but right. how do I get back he's like literally exactly it's where you just came reverse in. it's just you just retrace your steps buddy <laughs> we'll see. were you on the on a podcast I think I was looking at Kelsey Cook's Instagram where it was three other girls yeah with Whitney like oh. explaining taxes to you? Oh no, 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 no! You're thinking of uh, Annie Letterman. Was she? It was. It was like three girls I recognized. So maybe it yeah, wasn't it was you, but Esther Povitsky and Annie Letterman and. Uh, no, no, no! I know what you're talking, you're talking about, about right? but this, this was, this oh, was this like, in a, else. it was like a, uh, po I think she was like, a, it was like a podcast appearance. I want to say, and I thought you were on it where she was talking about just double everything. Double the cost of oh, everything. Oh, what she did ours a long time ago. Yeah, I it was. It was do, old. Yeah, I used to do the self helpless podcast with Delaney Fisher and Kelsey Cook. Yes, and, uh, I think that was it. Yeah, I stopped doing it because I was just like had too much going on. But they still do it, and they're so great. And Whitney did our podcast during the pandemic, so that she, might be. What she you're was. About. Her, it was on her, Zoom, right? Yes. yes, and she was like. Just double the price of everything yes. you're gonna buy because that's like basically what taxes is, and she. Yeah. It was how she like stopped spending too much money basically but she was like if you if a sweater is fifty dollars just pretend it's a hundred and if the coffee's four dollars it's actually eight dollars i don't like this advice and, at all. And, and you all three yeah. of you guys were like you were all nodding like okay yeah. okay and i was like oh but that is that's dreary that that's is sad. like that'll ruin your goddamn life well if it'll help this is how i do it when i make money i just pretend like i made half of it yeah, you just That's cut it in I half did. right so away. It's the same thing. I don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't like any money. of this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, yeah, it's not that much because you're like, well, 30% is going to go to all my various reps, and then there's like another 30% for taxes. So you're like, actually, I'll make like 40% of this. Yeah, That's <laughs> brutal. This is a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm saying it out loud, in my head, it seems more responsible. I, I hope I forget all of this <laughs> by the end of the day. <laughs> the, the, I feel like the reps are, are an interesting thing, too, because as technology gets better and things change it's like do i need all of you people like what i'm like you know agent oh, manager yeah. publicist da, 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 da. i'm like don't you all kind of do the same fucking thing and do i even need that anymore and you all get a fucking 10 percent. like what here's what i've realized and you know i have like i have such a great team of like my manager and my agents like truly i think they're amazing but there's all these extra people mm -hmm. that you also need and it, it is interesting because your manager or your agent used to do all those things. Yes. And then you get to a certain point where you're like doing enough things, as I'm sure you guys know, that they're like, well, also, w we, we need someone to do this specific thing for you. And you're like, but you guys do that. They're like, yeah, but we don't want to anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's all it is. We tried to get you to a point where we didn't have to do it anymore. <laughs> and now you make enough money where you could give some of it to someone who only does that. <laughs> and so you're kind of paying all these people like a lot of money yes. to do. <laughs> You know, what what, you're like, I think I could have done it. Yeah. Like, I'll just make up an email address yes. and email people. I will just send the club a DM and then yeah. that's it. Like, right? yeah. like, well, I feel like I could do this. Um, and like, especially with like social media help. I mean, I think that's like a good investment. If you find good people, like the people I have that help me with my social media yeah. are, are helpful, but I still do a lot of it. It's yeah. not like they just, I know some people just don't even touch their socials, it's just, but, which but is do, the dream. Do but they like, work? Does it work? 
Like, I feel like you can usually tell people who job it out and people who actually, like, use it. And yeah. I feel like if you use it, it you get more engagement, you get more followers. And, yeah, you know, I if it's so just too. clips of your stand-up and just, like, that kind of shit, it's like, oh, yeah, you have, like, a, a kid running this page versus, like, oh, that's her, that's him. They're, like, making, you know what I mean? I mean, So yeah. that's, I, if there's one thing I think you shouldn't, like, job out, it's probably that. It's probably the one you want to job out the most, but. Right. I mean, my Facebook, I don't look at. Oh, I, um, I, don't, I don't even have a Facebook yes. login. Yeah, they're like, can no we post clue. this on Facebook? They were, like, asking me for Facebook post approval this morning, and I was like, you. Wait, that, do you guys you use our Facebook a lot? All the time. Yeah. yeah. All the time. <laughs> Wait, and, like, and, like, and, as and, us? Like, it's still. Yeah, you guys have Facebook. <laughs> yeah. they'll, they'll be like they'll be like oh that that that, that one minute man went viral on facebook i'm like good I, whatever bro i don't fucking even care it's like great i reached all the i ants. didn't even know i didn't yep. even know i had a facebook page <laughs> yep yeah that's exactly what mine do and i'm like great there's apparently a lot of money to be had on facebook yeah nick's, or... nick's definitely cutting this all out so like, <laughs> what's the next topic he's gonna, gonna cut this out and just not tell us he cut it and we'll never know <laughs> think about that all the time too they could cut so many things out of the podcast and not tell us and yeah. i just would never know i do, do you ever do you watch yourself he's gonna do that too like on podcast yeah do you like, listen do to i your... listen to the podcast like well you, you're you're doing guest appearances i guess but like yeah. if if you know it's like or like do you do you listen back to your sets? Yeah, I yeah. do when I'm writing, or if right. I need to like type. I don't as much as do you, I should. Do you cringe? Like, does that kill you? Oh, it's a nightmare. The worst. Right? <laughs> it's yeah. Terrible. Yeah, I, could, I, I, I get that vibe from you that you would hate that also. I can't. I, hate it. I can't look at a, like we put out clips of ourselves and promotional shit, and I'm just like, oh my god. Oh, it's so hard. I worst. did. I did Seth Meyers last night, and I was like can you guys just watch it and tell me how it was because mm -hmm. i don't remember like you were there i'm like i know but i it wasn't goes, though yeah. in and out like, i was like floating above my body hoping i was doing a good job yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah i, I don't remember anything i say no. like what was like what's your what's your favorite part of the show like so we'll make a clip of it i'm like i have no clue what i just said yeah like we just finished it and i have no idea what i said yeah it's like, like some remember, sort of podcast amnesia like, i remember we all laughed yeah we do that part right the part, <laughs> the part that was good that one the part that was good the part that i was like that would be a great clip but yeah. like, you didn't say it out loud and you're like damn it all right, <laughs> find it whatever you want god we must be the worst <laughs> and this is why you have people right yeah exactly. that's why there's 14 people in this room. right <laughs> well Congratulations on everything. It's it's incredible to watch it happen. Thank so, you so I mean, much. I feel like uh, Arenas is next then, right? I mean, you know, we'll see. Don't put that expectation on me. Because <laughs> now if I don't make it to Arenas, I'm going to be like, you're going to come back next year and you make some no Arenas yet. No, but what's <laughs> great is that, you know, you're so young that it's like, I don't know, most people aren't doing Arenas till they're like 50. Right. I mean, look, I I don't feel strongly about doing arenas. I'm not someone who's like, I gotta get into an arena. Yeah. Like the I, way you are about theaters, you're not that way. I about love. Arenas. I was. Yeah. I always wanted to be in theaters. So yeah. I was like, if I can I just be like so Brian Regan, like yeah. what he does. That's like there, the there's dream. something about arenas too. That's like. Uh, it's very cool when I like I saw Bill Burr do Madison Square Garden and I was like this yeah. is fucking nuts because he has the control of like 17,000 people yeah. but also comedy I think like theaters is the perfect blend of like small enough that it's still funny big enough that you're making a ton of money and yeah. arenas is kind of like I think where it bastardizes or like sells out or whatever you know what I mean so yeah. even if arenas didn't happen it's I don't think that's crazy but at your at your pace like gonna have to come up with something bigger than fucking arenas yeah maybe a dome full of fire. yeah there we go <laughs> dome it. we'll provide the dome all right um all right so we've got the core life uh crisis special mm -hmm. and the deal with the tour yes cool. so netflix for the special and uh ttomcomedy.com ttomcomedy.com to thank you love appreciate it <laughs> thank you thank you well we meet again this little dance that we do where you finish a video you've made it all the way to the end and yet you are not subscribed why why would you do that? Why would you, it's like watching a TV show and then wanting to like forget the channel that you just watched it on. It's like you know you like it. You know you've watched this whole fucking thing. It's probably like a six hour video. Just click subscribe. Screensaver went on twice. Just click subscribe just and click then subscribe. and then you watch the video the next time it pops up. And we don't have to do this dog and pony show every fucking time. Click subscribe. It costs you nothing. Click the costs you nothing. Zero dollars. And it makes us, us money. And then everything gets better. Rising tides lifts all the subscribers. <laughs> click the, the bell. The bell is a big one too. And then you comment. But just click the subscribe button for the love of God.